Tonight's episode of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show is brought to you by Kid Products, stick stoves and reflector ovens proudly made in Canada. Algonquin Outfitters, with five key locations in and around Algonquin Park to serve your backcountry needs. Salus Marine, keeping you safe on the water since 1999. Ostrom Outdoors, custom fit canoe packs and barrel harnesses. Badger Paddles, handcrafted canoe paddles made to order. And Novicraft Canoes, connecting you with nature in Canadian-made canoes since 1970. Hey, well, Happy New Year's, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show, the first for 2024. Hope everybody had a great holiday season. Uh, hopefully everybody got everything they wanted for Christmas. Uh, hopefully everybody has a New Year's resolution that perhaps you may or may not have kept already. Uh, I myself personally do not do any New Year's resolutions anymore. And that was a New Year's resolution probably around 10 years ago. So that's the only New Year's resolution I've ever stuck to. So uh, you know what? We are in tune for a great show tonight. And uh, the second half of the season here is uh, basically kicking off here with uh, the, the first show here of 2024. We got a great guest tonight to, uh, to bring on, and it's going to be a really fun evening. Uh, this guy's really breaking into the scene here in YouTube. But uh, before we get on with that and our guest... Uh, of course, as you know, we do have a lot of updates that we need to do, being the first show of uh, the 2024 season. Uh, we'll start with, you know what, our last show of the season, which was, or of, of 2023, which was our Christmas special. Uh, it was a really fun show. It was one of them shows like all of our Christmas shows where, you know what, has no direction whatsoever. Uh, never know who's really going to be on the show because we just bring people in and we chit chat, and talk about our, our holiday seasons and what we're expecting to do. And uh, you know what? It was a really fun evening. And if you happen to be still in the Christmas spirit or the holiday spirit at all, uh, feel free to go back and check out that show if you are uh, if you're still feeling merry, right? Uh, also, for anybody who is right now uh, maybe new to the show, uh, maybe you're re-watching this episode, or perhaps you're listening on uh, YouTube Music uh, through the podcast, you can skip these announcements by going ahead maybe eight or ten minutes into the show, and you'll get right to the meat and potatoes with our uh, with our guests. So just like to put that out there so that uh, you don't have to go through all the announcements if you don't want to. Um, let's see here. I'm looking up because I, I forgot my notes down here and I got it on the computer up here above me and, uh, I just got to follow myself along in a different way. Uh, let's see here. Last Tuesday, uh, over the, over the Christmas holidays, we were to have our Christmas, uh, members or our, our channel members only Christmas giveaway. Uh, it was going to be a channel members only episode and it was to be held on, or on December the 27th. This guy got really, really sick over the holidays. Uh, I was quite ill uh, from, like, you know, about the time of that, uh, that Christmas show was when I really started feeling it. And I'm still not quite 100% yet, but uh, we are improving. Uh, with that being said, uh, we I had to postpone the Christmas giveaway by about a week. We ended up having it last Tuesday evening. Uh, it was about a 45-minute show, and we managed to give away three fantastic prizes um, courtesy of all of our sponsors, who I'll have to thank here in a moment. But uh, the winners of the show or of the uh, the giveaway were uh, Alan Bierhoff, who is a channel member. I see Alan is in the chat tonight. Um, uh, let's see here. We also had the Happy Scallop. Not sure if you're in the chat tonight, but uh, congratulations there as well. And Trisha Harrison was also a winner. All of your prizes are now in the mail and on their way to you. Uh, we had some fantastic things uh, to give away, courtesy, like I say, of all of our channel uh, uh, sponsors. Nova Craft Canoe, uh, uh, Algonquin Outfitters, Kid Products, Ostrom Outdoors, Badger Paddle, Saddle, uh, Salus Marine. Uh, these are all companies that, as you know, I firmly believe in. Uh, I stand behind them, their products and services 100% because to me, they are some of the best. Uh, they're all Canadian owned companies and you know what? They, they're, they're the best, you know what? And I appreciate the support, uh, you know, with, with today's market and, uh, the economy these days for them to go out on, on a limb and actually donate what they donate to the show. 
I have to thank him from the bottom of my heart. Uh, you made a lot of people very happy. And that is a good thing. That is a good thing. So uh, throw a little congratulations clap in the chat there to our winners. I see Trish is in there now and Alan Bierhoff. Uh, so once again, congratulations on your wins. Uh, moving on from there, uh, next week, next week we got a good show. We actually are doing a, uh, a sponsor feature and we're going to be having, uh, Ostrom Outdoors, Bill and Anna Ostrom are going to be our guests next week on the show. So if you want to learn a little bit more about Ostrom Packs and why they're so incredible and the history of the company. And then, of course, Bill and Ann are actually avid outdoorsy people. As a matter of fact, they're out west right now uh, skiing the dirt, the dirt hills right now, I think, because there's not a lot of snow out there. But uh, they are out west right now on a ski adventure and uh, they are they, they've got some fantastic canoe tripping uh, under their belts. Uh, especially being from the Thunder Bay area originally, they have a lot of opportunity up there to uh, to get out and do some pretty epic adventures. So by all means, join us next uh, Tuesday evening and uh, learn about Ostrom Outdoors and Bill and Anna Ostrom. Uh, it's that time of the evening here where I must thank my channel members. Uh, thanks to uh, all of you who uh, provide support to the channel Let's see here. If I hit the right buttons, I might even get the right things going across the screen here. Uh, all the people floating across the bottom of the screen are our uh, current channel members. Thank you very much uh, to all of you. Uh, I really appreciate the support, and so does the channel. Uh, to anybody that may be interested in becoming channel members, you could do so for as little as 13 cents a day. Uh, just hit that join button that's down around here somewhere on your screen and uh, feel free to see what that is all about. Uh, we have to thank our new channel members. We've got a couple of new channel members. Uh, the Happy Scallop, who was actually one of the winners of the one of the swag giveaway prizes. Uh, Becky Maves, uh, Wade in the Wild, and Mike Della Rizzo tonight. Uh, Mike, thank you very much for uh, joining and becoming a member tonight. Mike, be sure to drop me your email address so I can... Uh, or Drop me an email with your address so I can get your uh, your uh, membership perks all started, and we'll get those out to you uh, in the mail as soon as possible. Now, we also do have uh, a few channel members who are celebrating some milestones. Uh, celebrating 12 months, we have Susan R. and Tim and Pamela over at Super Good Camping. I know you're in the chat there tonight. Thank you very much uh, for reaching that 12-month milestone already. Uh, I will be getting your membership badge sticker. Uh, in this case, uh, the little gold one will be coming to you here in the mail soon. So uh, we'll get that out as well. And then celebrating 24 months, we have Scott White and also Odiac Outdoors. So uh, same there. Thank you very much for your support, everybody. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Uh, let's lose this here off the screen. For anybody that does need to get me their uh, mailing address, here's the email address here. You can send that to. Uh, please do that, and I will get your uh, your decals and your membership stuff all all started for you. Also, I have to thank uh, Beauty in the Back Beauty of the Back Country for your coffee contributions this week. Uh, today's actually a tea because I still got the hoarse voice, but let's take a dip, everybody. Temperature or yes, where am I here? Uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, we do have a couple of birthday announcements this week too. Uh, a good friend, Preston Sear, he was one of the organizers of Algonquin or the uh, Paddle in the Park program or contest that was on a, a couple of years ago. Uh, it is it is past past its uh, its life now, but uh, Preston is uh, doing a lot of traveling. So Preston, if you happen to see the show, happy birthday to you! And then also uh, Jonathan Mercer, who is also also celebrating a birthday. Now, if you happen to be celebrating a special event, please do drop me uh, an email right here again. It can be at gmail.com. It could be an anniversary. It could be a divorce divorceversary, <laughs> whatever it might be. Whatever might make you happy, uh, any type of celebration, please do send that across. I'd be happy to announce it here on the show. And then if you have any guests or topics that you'd like to see on the show, please do send them my way as well. They really do help me to uh, to figure out exactly what we are going to do for future episodes. So uh, we do have a couple of great episodes coming up. As I mentioned, Bill and Ann Ostrom next week. Uh, at the end of the month, we're going to have uh, Jeff McMurtry from uh, uh, Maps by Jeff uh, to talk about his new Algonquin map series and what else is coming down the pipe with him as well. So it should be a good time. Uh, we will be also opening up the table, hopefully, or the, 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 
the the stream here for anybody that might want to join us maybe after eight o'clock to ask a question of tonight's guest and uh, maybe get the little meet him, greet him, and learn a little bit more about him. So without further ado, I think it is time that we uh, we get ourselves set here. Uh, let me just uh, clear my screen from that. And uh, let's bring on tonight's guest. Uh, tonight, we're joined by a 23-year-old videographer. Uh, man, I, what I would do to be back at 23 years old and doing what he's doing. Uh, he's an outdoor enthusiast, and he's burst onto the scene with epic solo and collaborative canoe trips on the Steel River, Tomogamy, Killarney, amongst others. He's been uh, uh, collaborating with other YouTubers and uh, doing a great job with that. Please welcome to the live stream. We have Ben Boshaw. How are you doing, man? Hey, I'm great. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me on, man. Hey, it's, uh, it's truly pleasure. an honor. I, I, uh, it, actually, it's my honor because, like I, I, I was telling you earlier in the green room, I really enjoy talking to people who I enjoy watching on YouTube or, you know, people that are inspirations to me. And yes, a 23 year old young man like yourself <laughs> oh, could really be an inspiration to, uh, <laughs> to this old fella. Right. So it's, uh, that, that, that's, that's a good thing, man. Be, you, you should be, you should be honored or not honored at that, but you should be, uh, accept it. It does. Accept yeah. That, Hey, thank you so much for saying that, that, that does mean a lot to me. Uh, you yeah. know, it's funny, uh, I've spent so many hours like watching this show and I've seen your face and heard your voice so much. I kind of feel like I know you personally, even though only, I think I only met you once in person at the, uh, at the outdoor show last year. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, but it's funny. I feel like I know you. It's, it's that weird I, thing, right? It's, fun, it's funny. Cause at that show, I, I think you were hanging around with Evan LaFave, right? At the, at the show kind of, you know what? Or, I actually, I had, that's where I met him. Oh, is that so, right? Yeah. I didn't know he, uh, he had put a camera in my face and I said, well, wait a second. Are, are you a social media guy? And he said, yeah. And so I, I pulled up his channel and it turns out we've been following each other for like the last two years and oh, we didn't no. know it. And uh, yeah, we've been friends ever since. That, that's the way it goes. Eh? It, it's kind of yeah. funny. It, the, the, you, you say that like, you know, you feel like you, you know me type of thing, right? When I, when I first met you there and you go, yeah, my name's Ben, right? I go, yeah, hey, how, how you doing? I, I had no idea who you were, Yeah, but that that's how we all started. That's how how, how oh, we exactly. all start as YouTubers is uh, we all start from the bottom and try to work our way up, right? Oh yeah, and I at that outdoor show, um, I was kind of uh, you know I, I had a, like such an amazing time, but I was very much kind of a lost puppy there because I I was like just showed up alone. I wanted to kind of put myself out there, and I'm, like next thing you know, I'm standing next to freaking Tosh and Joe Robinette and like all these yeah. guys and 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 you, and I'm like okay, like I'm, I'm now hanging out with them. Like what, what's going on? <laughs> and it was just, yeah. it, it all, uh, it all happened so quickly. And, and at that time I, I had only done maybe my biggest trip was a four nighter and uh, like talking to these people that have done these, whatever Yukon expeditions. And I'm like, yeah, I, uh, I went to Killarney. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, uh, not to well, compare that's, but, uh, but it was just funny doing that. Right. Yeah. Well, you, you've come a long way in a year. Uh, it's 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 very evident. Um, your numbers are starting to grow on YouTube, which is the way it goes. You know, a little strides at first, and uh, who knows? Maybe uh, before long, you'll be uh, getting that silver plaque from uh, from YouTube. Oh, right? Wouldn't maybe. that be cool? Maybe. This oh, guy will never hit it out of my sixty six hundred uh, subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you never know. You never know. Hey, that's this this show tonight is going to take off. I promise. Yeah. There you go. Anybody in the chat that's not subscribed to me and Ben, come on, boost our numbers a little bit. We want, we want to try to get a silver plaque, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. So, oh, so awesome. Ben, ben tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, like I say, you're you're fairly new on the scene, but uh, you seem to be making some strides with some uh, some great trips, some great video editing, some uh, great collaborations. Who are you? What's your what's your background? What do you do here? So, oh my goodness. Um, I, uh, I've, I've always loved the outdoors. It's, it's kind of something that we've always done as a family. And, uh, like as, as long as I remember, uh, we, we did, uh, an annual trip to, have you ever been to a Wenda provincial park? Have you uh, heard of that? I've heard of it, but I've never it's been. On, uh, it's on Georgian Bay. So we would do, um, like a, an annual trip there every Labor Day weekend with all of our neighbors. Uh, we, we used to live on a cul-de-sac with like I think there was like over 10 families that all had kids around the same age. So very tight knit community there. And we would always do an annual trip. And um, I just, I remember just always loving the outdoors. And uh, some of my earliest memories were 
uh, like fishing and, and camping and being out in the boat with my dad. And, and uh, that kind of just always stuck with me. And uh, throughout like high school and stuff, I, I kind of had it in my head that I, well, really didn't know what I wanted to do. And uh, the one thing that was always there was that I just, I wanted to just see the world and I wanted to adventure and wanted to just kind of like play outside as much as possible. And uh, that kind of just snowballed into uh, camping more often, going outside more often. And, uh, and, you know, uh, it turned into me like mustering up the guts to, to start filming myself. Um, and, uh, you know, I actually kind of want to take this moment to, to go back to the very beginning. Hey, I, I forgot to ask you, am I able to, to screen share? Yeah, actually, uh, if you okay. go to the bottom of your screen, you'll see. Okay. That's awesome. Button. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the very first, so, so for me, one thing about me is that I'm like an absolute nut when it comes to fishing. I love fishing so much. That's kind of what got me into this. And yeah. uh, I will show you uh, the very first moment of my life. Actually, I'm not going to show it yet. I want to tell the story first. But um, so this is the story of my very first fish. I was three years old. And uh, my, my dad's side of the family, uh, he's from Capascasing, Ontario, uh, which is, for people that don't know, it's like 10 hours north of Toronto. It's a couple hours north of Timmins. And uh, so that's where my grandparents lived. That's we would go up there every summer. And, you know, in Northern Ontario, that's, that's what you do. You go out fishing or you go out in the bush. And, and so that's pretty much all I knew. And at three years old, um, I, and believe it or not, I, I actually do remember this. I had my little three foot uh, Scooby-Doo fishing rod, which I, I wish I brought here. It, it's unfortunately it's at my parents' place. Uh, but that would have been a cool prop to show. Um, but we went to uh, this lake called Remy Lake, which is uh, just outside of Capascasing. And we were just uh, fishing. It was uh, my family and uh, another close family friend. They were, they were all fishing. We're all on this uh, dock at this public boat launch. And they were all trying to hook into a fish so that they could pass the rod off to me to reel it in. And uh, sure enough, uh, I was the one that caught the first fish. And it turned out to be a 16-inch uh, smallmouth bass, which uh, it puts up a pretty good fight for a three-year-old. So I'm going to see if I can uh, share my screen here and show this. Is that the is that the one profile you picked that you sent me there when I asked yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. You didn't share that with anyone, did you? No, I haven't shared okay. that, no. Oh, sorry. This is taking me a second. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, there we go. Can I share that? There we go. Perfect. Okay. So can you see this? No, it's not. Uh, you have to hit. Uh, you have to hit share. I think. Oh, um, so, here, let me try again. Share. You see at the bottom, you'll see share screen. Yeah, yeah, I've got it here. Share screen, and then you're going to select the screen that you want to share. Sorry about or, that. Or folks. a window. Or a window. Yeah. I'm going to. Uh, sorry, that, I'm sure the suspense is killing some people here. <laughs> you know what? I might be able to pull it up quicker than you. Think. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you're making here. fun of me for being young. There you Tell go. Me. Let's see here. There you uh, go. Share entire screen. Can you see that? Uh, I don't know here. I'm not on screen right now. I'm looking for it. No, nope, not yet. I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna just, uh, I'm going to pull it up here really quick, man. Yeah, please uh, do. There we go. Let's see there. Okay. And if I hit... Uh... <laughs> Bear with us, people. This is going to happen. Here we go. <laughs> Share. And uh, that there... There we go. Okay, now we got it. Ta-da! There we go. There, there's a there little. There we go. Uh, Look at that. Look at that lunker. There. So that's uh, myself and my dad. I'm sure you can imagine who's who. But uh, we. Uh, so the, the the cool thing about this is that um, the friend that we were with, um, and my my dad will correct me afterwards if uh, if I'm getting the details of this story wrong. But the friend that we were with actually had a connection with uh, TSN. So like the, the, uh, television programming, like sports broadcasting. Yeah. And, uh, they wanted to do a story about my first fish and, really? uh, yeah. So the thing is though, is that I was way too nervous. They wanted to do me, uh, do a phone interview and call me and show this photo on TSN. And I did not want anything to do with it. I was, I was way too shy. 
And the only way that my parents were able to convince me was by bribing me with chocolate for breakfast the next day. <laughs> and uh, so, so eventually I, I did agree to do it um, with, with the, the chocolate condition. Um, but uh, it, it, the funny thing is that you're, you're uh, making fun of me for being 23, but we have that TSN thing on VHS. Oh, that's wow. uh that's that's how old i am there, there you go Believe me, i'm not making fun of you being 20 <laughs> no, no, I'm being 23 and i'm not anymore so yeah yeah i'm just messing uh, I, for, for anybody that may be uh listening to this uh over the uh the podcast um the picture that i'm showing there is a very young ben uh about three years old wearing a life jacket with a killer fishing rod in his hand <laughs> and his dad is uh with him there holding this nice 16 inch bass that he caught that's uh that's a great uh great story great memory for sure oh yeah, yeah. i i my, my goal is to make it big enough to to put that rod in a museum one day you still have the rod oh yeah yeah oh i'm not getting rid of it i'm not for the right price i will but for the right price there you go somebody, <laughs> somebody who's uh looking for a 20 year old kids fishing rod yeah yeah the right price it's yours that's awesome man that, that's cool uh i know you're you were mentioning that your dad was excited to be uh, watching you here on the show too so that's oh yeah yeah my i think my whole family's tuning in here i uh i'm trying not to get too distracted by the chat here but um yeah i got my <laughs> my immediate family and i think uh, my my grandparents are here watching too um which actually so um talking about how all this outdoors kind of transitions into uh like what i do now so my dad's side of the family like the, with them being from uh so, so they they lived in capas casing but they're they're from uh porcupine just outside of timmins um but my my grandfather was a bush pilot and and they had a camp uh just outside of cap and so that's where kind of my dad grew up doing his whole thing with all the, the fishing and and uh my grandmother was like she was create more crazy about fishing than my grandfather even was she would right. go and take the boat out on her own and so that's that's kind of been in my my blood for forever and when i think about um kind of like why am i the way that i am um i look at my mom's side of the family as well and they're all outdoors lovers all all very adventurous people um but my uh, Nana and granddad, so my mom's parents, um, so they're actually from Liverpool, England, which there's no camping out there as far as I know. Uh, that's notably where the Beatles are from. That's, that's what they're known right. for. Um, yeah. but, uh, but they're very, very adventurous people. They've traveled all over the world. And uh, my Nana is a very talented uh, uh, watercolor painter. So she's, she's an artist and um, how this connects is uh, I was at her place, uh, I don't know, probably three, three months ago now. And I was just looking around. She's got all kinds of artwork up all along the walls and stuff and different photos she's taken. But a lot of it is watercolor paintings that she's done herself. And same with my childhood home. We've got all kinds of her artwork up. And I had this moment where I saw, like I was in her house and I was like walking around looking at her stuff. and like I saw this painting and I was looking at it going, wait a second, that is exactly how I would frame one of my shots in, in my videos. And I kind of like had this moment of realization that like this, like whatever, so-called natural talent and this, this eye that I have for photography, that's all from her. I'm like growing up like at my Nan and granddad's place, looking at all her artwork. It's, it's all very nature themed. Uh, yep. She's like kind of, a lot of uh, of her paintings are kind of inspired by like Algonquin Park area and stuff like that. And and I, I had this moment where I was like, wow, like wait, that kind of creative side comes from her. Um, and you know what? I, I'm kind of kicking myself right now because I don't know if I've actually said that to her. I, I think she's watching tonight, but I will I will say that to her in person as well. <laughs> there you um, go. Well, they say the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, right? So, right. Yeah. Yeah. That's good yeah. Stuff. Very yeah. cool, man. So that that whole uh, love of the outdoors uh, at a very young age is obviously stuck with you. Uh, oh yeah, that, that's why I encourage people so much to get their kids out young, uh, get them out into nature, get them out in that canoe, get them out backpacking, uh, uh, just camping in the backcountry if you can, or even even front country camping because it can lead to so much more. And this is a a classic a classic example of that whole. <laughs> that whole theory right so that's good man 
pass that on to your kids one day when uh, oh yeah you bet you're married you bet. and you have children right so yeah yeah me, yeah, I'm absolutely. trying to pass that on now to my grandchildren. So that's a, that's a, that's the task that I have ahead of me, and it's gonna happen. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh yeah, hey, enough time. Yeah. And even if uh, well, I don't, I don't know what what the situation's like right now. But even if uh, they don't love it right now, you know that whatever time you're spending with them right now, they'll they'll be grateful for one day. Yeah, yeah. So that, that, sure. You know what? Yeah. The, the all my all my trip videos and stuff. They're not so much for the YouTube world. They're basically my my grandson watches Papa on on. Oh, I love on that, oh. and he loves watching Papa, right? So he, he sits yeah. there and he's watching me canoe. He'll even watch my shows, a little bugger. He's only three Come years old, on. and it, just because he's getting to see he's getting to see me on screen, and I guess it's a it's a big thing to him. But so it's this YouTube is my legacy. <laughs> <laughs> no right? i love it though that's yeah. that's what it's all about i've i've actually had that thought before in my head where where uh like one day like like every video that i post that's that's just out there now that's out in the universe and and uh it's not going anywhere as, as far as we know i think youtube is here to stay and uh oh look at that there's there's my dad i just saw a message pop up um there sorry, you go, Trevor, thanks much yeah squirrel <laughs> but uh but yeah, I've always thought like it would be so cool. Like, I have maybe um, unfortunately my my dad's grandparents who they're from Northern Ontario, they they passed away a few years ago. So unfortunately, they haven't even uh, like they, I haven't shown them any of these videos. I don't they don't know what I'm doing right now. I like to think maybe they're watching down on me or whatever. But but uh, it's like I think I have one or two photos of of each of them when they were in their twenties, and that's it. But my grandkids one day will have a whole catalog of videos of of me out there paddling and catching fish and whatever and and messing up and and succeeding hopefully. <laughs> there you go. YouTube is your legacy for your children too. There you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the idea. So I have yeah. to ask, Ben. Uh, you your your videos that you're putting out are are very clean and crisp, and they see they seem to be almost like. You mentioned that you're a videographer. Are you a videographer or or are you a videographer through YouTube? Like, where, where are you picking up these mad editing skills and, and storyline? Because your videos all have a storyline to them, too. And Kevin Callan would be <laughs> proud of you with the storyline. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, well, you know what? Uh, I've, I've always, always, like, messed around with cameras. Um, I was actually uh, talking to my dad on the phone today, um, and uh, he was saying this is – Something I, I shouldn't even be giving him credit because I already wanted to tell this story, but he uh, he's making sure that uh, we had a uh, like a nice camera. I think I was like whatever eight or nine years old, and uh, we always had like whatever the digital camera that the family had. But then they they bought like a nice DSLR. It was nice at the time, and um, I wasn't allowed to touch it. And it was like the nice camera. Don't play with that one. And, um, but of course, I couldn't help myself, and I snuck it out and. Um, I think I was just like shooting birds in the backyard and stuff like that. And then they saw the photos and they were like, Oh, okay. Like he's actually not too bad. <laughs> um, but, uh, so I've, I've always like just loved, um, uh, messing around with photos and video. I remember, um, like I, I always used to make like snowboarding videos and stuff, uh, just on, on windows movie maker back in the day. And, um, I always carried that through and then I went to, um, my real like kind of formal training, I, I went to a, a media program for college. So I went to Humber College. It was it was a very like uh, broad media program that covers all facets. So like uh, video, photo, graphic design, a little bit of web design, which I'm absolutely terrible at, barely passed that course. Um, but uh, the video has always been my my passion. And um, I think when you're you're like really in love with something, it's, it's kind of easier to progress. Mm -hmm. um and then the storytelling um i think i would have to credit that to, i'm a a proud drama kid in high school which uh, wasn't very cool in high school but i i always stuck with it and and i loved like performing and whatnot and i uh we we wrote some some pretty funny plays and stuff like that i always i was used to try and make them like comedies yeah. um and uh whatever i never got like bullied for it or anything but it wasn't a cool thing um, but the, I've used so many of the skills I learned in drama class. Um, and, uh, 
you know, unfortunately, this is a uh, kind of heartbreaking. My drama teacher, unfortunately, passed away of cancer um, when I was in high school. So she uh, she had like left a, a really big impact on my life, and she was just an amazing human being. Um, but uh, I, I, yeah, I've kind of carried those skills that she taught me, and uh, tr I try to make. I think in order for a video to be engaging, you do need to tell a story and. Uh, I always try to stick with that, you know. Well, you do a good job at it because I'll tell you, I, me, I blab too much. But there, there again, <laughs> my, my videos are, are more for uh, as a, a time capsule, right? But uh, for for somebody that uh, is trying to tell a story, you know, it's it's like to the point. Say what you got to say and move on to the next scene, right? It's uh, it doesn't have to be a long, drawn out speech like Canoe Hound always does. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know what though, it's it's uh really awesome to be here for many reasons but um i don't kind of, i don't really have this opportunity in my videos to just blab on for hours right um mm -hmm. i one of the the i don't know if this is the right thing to do but it's one thing that i stick with is in my videos i try not to uh have too many clips that are like over like five or six seconds long because unfortunately in this day and age that's the attention span and if you uh if you have like a whatever a shot of a tree for 10 or 20 seconds people are like okay i'm bored next video um but so i don't have this opportunity to to kind of talk and tell my story because if i talk too much in the videos people click away <laughs> yeah 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 um, and you know what i found it quite amazing like we'll even use your uh your your steel river trip you you, you compacted a, a whole 11 day cool. trip into an hour and what 20 minutes or something like that right so that, that's hard to do i know i'm trying to and yes i am actually working on it but my wabakimi trip i'm trying I'm trying to do that i got i got gigabytes and gigabytes and gigabytes oh. of information right and trying to decipher through it and trying to to snip and crop and only keep what is good without losing what i want for time capsule you know what right I mean? yeah i, I yeah. should i should be doing two versions i should be doing one just the uh, raw and edited just clip 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 and then do one which is the uh, the short nasty there just to, to get out there on on youtube so people aren't bored and they'll watch the whole hour and 20 minutes of it right? so <laughs> maybe i should send yeah. the footage to you ben and you can edit that for me. <laughs> yeah wait we'll talk we'll talk Afterwards. Well, I don't know, man. I, I, could, I couldn't afford what you probably have to charge to uh to take care of that. yeah so you know talking about your video skills and, and the quality of your videos uh Part and parcel with that actually has to come content uh, and, and destinations and adventures. Uh, you've got some pretty good adventures under your belt here in the last couple of years. Uh, let's see here. I see uh, you got Steel River, Tomogamy, uh, submitting or summiting Ishpatina Ridge, uh, Spanish River, uh, amongst other trips uh, and, and some collaborations. Of of those four, say for instance, that I've already talked about, or that I just mentioned, which which one do you want to talk about? Which one stands out most to you as like a oh big accomplishment? Um, I think this the steel, no doubt. That was uh, that was the the biggest trip I had ever done, and just the experiences I I had. Um, but uh, you know, if if we have time, like I I've got a, a one or two things that I want to say about each video, if that's okay. Yeah, man. Um, What's that? Yeah. So, cause this, this summer, um, I, I kind of, uh, it's funny. I sat my parents down, we were out for dinner one night and, uh, and I kind of just said to them like, Hey, like, I really think I've got a shot at, at making this and, and I just need time to, you know, go out there and film and like, would you guys be cool if I, like, I, I didn't necessarily, I wasn't like all dramatic and I quit my job or anything like that, but basically said to them like i'm gonna commit like a hundred percent of my time to like camping and filming and and uh i was wasn't really sure like what what they were would what their reaction would be like to that uh but they were all in and they were super supportive and they were like oh my god dude like follow your dreams um so this summer like i like i camped more than i didn't camp um so i started off uh, i had actually bought my first canoe this past year um <clears throat> excuse me but uh that was the week of the outdoor show i had bought my canoe and then it but it was february so i was like <laughs> like just waiting like it was killing me and uh then the first trip um my dad and i uh loaded my canoe and uh our two atvs uh onto the truck 
and we headed up north and went to um, this, uh, it's Nagogamasis Lake. Is uh, We've got a friend's camp up there. And uh, it's, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of Nagogamasis Provincial Park. It's kind of near Hearst, Ontario. Uh, but that was just such a blast to start the year off. Like I, I hadn't touched water yet. And we went up to an absolute paradise. We spent like a few days on the ATVs, just kind of scouting the areas. And uh, like we, we basically pinpointed, there, there's like 100 lakes in that area. And we pinpointed our favorite ones. To, and I said, okay, like, I think this is the one I want to, like have the inaugural paddle in and uh he basically just dropped me off and and uh, that video was the one uh where it was like crystal clear blue water and yeah and was- uh so that was like the first time i'd ever paddled my canoe it was just like come on okay and uh and i, I have I, one I, question about that because yes, i didn't watch yeah. that why wasn't your dad out there paddling with you <laughs> he didn't get out there paddling with you or did yeah. you just want to be yeah. a hey soul? he had the invite but uh but he was all he was too busy he wanted to go check out all kinds of other lakes on his atv he you know while i was uh trying my new canoe he had just bought a new atv so he kind of wanted me to he's like you do your filming thing and uh he, he just wanted to play around on his new bike and uh right, right. and and okay. he went into a couple different lakes and and did some exploring himself um, but, uh, in that same trip I did, I was able, we were there for, I think 10 days at the cabin. So four of those days I was at that blue, like super blue Lake. I caught a trout. It was just magnificent. Went back to the cabin, had a nice sauna, get, cooked a, n- a couple of nice meals and then, uh, headed back out to a different Lake. And that Lake, um, I struggled for like two days, like just fishing, like not catching anything bigger than like a pike, like this big. And then, uh, I, I paddled into this one bay in, in one evening and like, I just paddled in and I actually had the intention of seeing a moose that night. It was like a beautiful evening. And I just wanted, it was like kind of a, a narrow river as it went in and it uh, was like sunset. And all of a sudden I heard like this big splash, like right next to me. And I was like, Oh my God, I I thought it was a beaver. And then I looked down and the water was like, bubbling with minnows there was minnows everywhere around me and then all of a sudden these huge pikes started coming up and grabbing the minnows and it was oh, like wow. this feeding frenzy so i'm like okay like get my line in <laughs> and uh and that that night i caught my biggest pike ever and then the next fish i caught my biggest pike ever and then the next fish i got my biggest pike ever it was like all big pike they were all like 20 pounders it's all on video too so if you think i'm lying i <laughs> Um, yep. and, uh, this is all like kind of just my, my first experience of, of, uh, paddling my new canoe. And I was just in heaven. Like, like I, uh, very much, I, I say this all the time. I'm, I'm just as much, uh, like a videographer as I am and an outdoors lover. And so I'm thinking like, this is so much fun. And this is also going to be such great content. Like this is going to go wild. And, uh, so from there, we, I just got some notes here so I don't forget anything. Um, after that, I, uh, I did tomogamy. Um, that was like a month later. That was uh, I'm shout out to mad for maple. I don't know if they're, they're here tonight. I, I haven't been reading the chat, but, um, those guys, uh, they've done some really crazy trips. They, they all kind of went to summer camp together. So they've done like, uh, I think they did the miss all the way up and, and uh, amongst all kinds of other trips, but I met them through my girlfriend, actually, um, through the music scene here in Toronto. Um, I met this guy at, at a gig and uh, it was a friend of a friend. And I, I like went up to him and I said, hey, I'm Ben. Like, I've seen your stuff. Like, you, you make great videos. He's like, oh, my God, Ben, do you want to join us for this canoe trip? <laughs> like, whatever. Oh, yeah. it, like, it was like an eight day canoe trip. And uh, we had originally planned to do the Des Moines River. Um, and uh, that's in, in Quebec for, for those that don't know. And unfortunately, this past year, the, the wildfires were getting way too close to that area. So we had like from, I think, March until July, we had planned this Des Moines trip. We like knew the ins and outs and uh, just canceled last minute. So we uh, in like three days before our tomogamy trip, we, we planned the whole thing. Like we, we didn't even know that we were going to go there and we planned it in three days and took off and it was a blast. It was so much fun. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was uh, kind of like another big milestone for myself because uh, just 
always going up to Capus Gasing, that's all along Highway 11 there, we'd always stop in Tomogamy as a family. That was kind of like a, a PE lunch stop, right? And uh, there there have been times uh, where we've camped in, in town there. They've got uh, Finless in Point. I, I think I'm saying yeah. that right. Yeah. Provincial Point um, there, yeah. Yeah, and uh, we camped there as a family. And I remember uh, one of my favorite memories, uh, my dad and I, so we, we camped like on one of the sites that was like waterfront and we had rented a boat. And so we had this little 12 foot aluminum boat and uh, my dad and I woke up early the one morning and took the boat into town and got breakfast at like 6 a.m. And, and uh, I remember during that breakfast, he was telling me about like the potential that tomogamy has like there's this whole other tomogamy that you don't see from town that like uh, you can canoe trip through and and uh, he mentioned ishpatina ridge and i think i was about 11 or 12 years old at that point and like i just had like stars in my eyes thinking about that and uh sure enough so i i never made it happen it, it just kind of kept getting pushed back a year pushed back a year and so when this des moines trip fell through i was like boys like let's do tomogamy. Like, let's do it. I, I would love to do Ishpatina Ridge. And, um, it's, uh, yeah. So, so we made it happen. We, we headed out. I just want to make sure I'm not skipping over anything. Um, oh yes. So on that, that tomogamy trip, uh, like I, I just, I kind of built it up for myself. Like I had so much expectation for tomogamy. Um, and, and I, before I'd even been there, like I had all of, uh, Hap Wilson's books and, um, like I actually, the Tomogamy book that I have of his, he signed at the outdoor show. I was like so starstruck by it. Yeah. And he, uh, he, I, I fangirled over Matt Wilson too because right? he, he was one of my biggest inspirations mm -hmm. over a land that I love so much too, being Tomogamy. I, I see your Tomogamy map behind you on the wall. Oh yeah, the yeah. Exact same map, right? Well, right there. <laughs> I got yeah. the same map. So oh, I know so, this thing like the back of my head now. It's like it's it's part of my nightly routine just to look like. Okay, where am I hitting next couple of years or whatever? Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, that was funny at the outdoor show. Not to get sidetracked, but at the outdoor show, I was like standing there, and this this guy with a bandana walks by. I was like, "Oh my god, is, is that Half Wilson?" Hey, girl, hey, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so so I had all these high expectations for tomogamy, and uh, on the first day, we saw four moose, and I'm like, "Are you kidding me? Like, is this real?" Mm. And uh, it was incredible weather the entire time. We we actually that was uh, first week of July, and that was on record for I think the hottest week globally or something like that. Like it was like I don't know if it was the hottest week in Canada ever, but um, it was like thirty plus degrees every day, and we were just sweating buckets after every portage, just jumping in the water, and and then you dry off before the next portage. It's like that kind of weather and. Um, it was amazing. All those, uh, those guys. So it's, uh, three guys from Mad for Maple. And then we had, uh, two of their friends and every single one of them were just great human beings. They're, they're all just kind of fun loving guys, very driven people. They're like, um, sort of the sort of people you feel motivated, uh, after being around them. Right. Um, they're just always looking to get better. And, and, uh, we, yeah, we did, uh, Ishpatina Ridge, which was, um, the only day that it rained actually uh which kind of sucked because the visibility was wasn't yeah. that great but the i don't like the view is not as good as uh even other spots in tomogamy like uh, maple mountain which i will hit one day i think that's a better view than than ishpatina they're um, they're they're both good in their own right if you hit a lot of yeah day. just, yeah. just though, yeah. for anybody that might not be familiar with ishpatina oh, yes. yeah. or maple mountain for that fact or that point is Ishpatina Ridge is the highest peak in Ontario and Maple yeah. Mountain is the second highest peak in all of Ontario. So, yeah. Yeah. So it just, I, I wanted that, that little accomplishment under my belt too. Right. And, and those guys have, uh, I think, uh, most of them, if not all of them out of our, our group of six had already done it before. So they weren't even like super keen on it, uh, especially with the rainy day. And then, and then they were all kind of, uh, not, they weren't uh, bummed to do it, but they were, they were kind of catering to me and and uh once we got up there it was just awesome i mean the, the feeling of of like being the highest person in ontario as funny as that sounds um yeah, yeah. Well, no, what just, you brought with you to the highest yeah, yeah. um uh, no it was just it was, it was surreal and and uh uh not to be too dramatic but it, it like i almost got emotional up there it's just kind of like it, it was just very cool and it was very um fulfilling to 
to do something that I had had my eyes set on, like since I was a little kid, right? That's like that, uh, the dad lore that my dad kind of created this, this scenario and, and I, I fulfilled it, but that was just incredible. And, and, uh, I, I can't say enough good things about all those people and, and that whole trip. It was just, it was the perfect canoe trip. And, and I'm so glad because, um, I had these, these such high expectations for tomography and, and it really kind of, it, it, like exceeded my expectations. Um, but then it was after that trip, um, like immediately after, before we had even gone home, we camped one night in town at that same, uh, Finlayson point And we got dinner at, uh, I can't remember what, there's not too many places in town to get dinner, but, um, whatever it was, but we, uh, we got dinner and had a few beers and stuff and then went back to the campsite and we were just kind of recapping and talking about like what's next and whatnot. And, and I had mentioned that I, had this idea of, of doing the steel river. And the reason I was talking to them about it was because they had done it the year before and, and they absolutely loved it. And, mm-hmm. uh, I was a little bit nervous. I was like, I don't, I don't know if I can handle a big trip like that, especially solo. Um, the, the big thing for me was the whitewater. Um, because I'd only like this past year was my first time with any whitewater experience. I did a, a course at Paddler co-op, and uh, before that, I'd never d- done any whitewater of any kind. And uh, so I was like pretty nervous about it. But but they all were just going like, dude, like you got this. Like just go for it, man. Don't even think about it. And uh, that that night, I remember it just kind of flicked a switch and got me all like pumped up for it. And so, yeah, I think like three weeks later, I I had had that uh, that whole Steel River trip planned, dehydrated all my food, and, and I was off. And um, that one uh, – yeah like it's it's one of those things where like um it it definitely changed my life like it i don't want to be uh too crazy about it but but it to spend 11 days in in the woods alone um and kind of constantly challenging myself it it um maybe maybe helped me mentally kind of believe in myself more if, if that makes sense like i uh it was like something that I was unsure if I was capable of. And then I just did it and I didn't think about it. And, and uh, I ignored any uh, like self doubt thoughts and, and it just, it just happened. And that trip, like uh, for anyone that uh, doesn't know the, the steel river, it's uh, it's on the North shore of Lake Superior. Um, now it's not on Superior, but it's just North of there. So it, uh, that scenery is just absolutely spectacular. There's like, 200 300 foot cliffs all around and uh, beautiful lakes amazing fishing uh that first night so uh oh and it's it's also home to uh what a lot of people argue to be the hardest portage in ontario it's uh Mm -hmm. diablo's portage the devil's portage (laughs) um and uh it was it was really bad It, it uh kevin callan has has wrote about that i think uh, once or twice for sure, definitely once. Um, and he says it's bad. And so I knew it was going to be bad and it was bad. <laughs> um, but then, uh, once I had completed that portage, you kind of, you come out to Diablo Lake and there's a nice little Island campsite, like right there. So I kind of crashed there. Like I had such a long day that the day before long in the drive. car, long drive. And, and, uh, I was like on such little sleep. So I crashed woke up the next morning and it was like i woke up early enough beautiful day like mist on the water i got out of the tent and uh just cast my line out first cast i caught like a perfect little brook trout and uh so i was able to, to have a little brook trout and wild blueberry breakfast there's blueberries all over the island as well so that was like my moment of like okay ah, I'm, I'm in this like right on and it was like kind of like it's not it's not uh something that I'm planning. It's not something I'm thinking about. I'm, I'm experiencing it. And like it, that, that brook trout blueberry breakfast on, on day one, official day one, it was, it, it that was the moment that kind of set me, it set the pace for the, it set the tone for the trip. Um, and then uh, I had like tailwinds, like through all the big lakes, uh, which was like, I don't know what I did to deserve that. Um yeah of appease the gods in some point yeah, yeah right yeah <laughs> yeah because yeah. it could have been i know uh uh jay and sherry from beauty of the backcountry uh, who i actually uh met up with on the way to that trip because they're they're in sault Saint marie so that was that was on my way and 
the uh oh yeah <laughs> sorry i'm reading these comments how come some of them pop up but but oh uh, I, I popped up okay yeah right um but uh yeah jay and sherry they they had done that trip uh, uh the month before and i had met up with them for lunch and they, they were telling me that they had like six days of rain and headwinds and it was just a complete slog fest and um it was it was brutal they still enjoyed it of course but it was it was nothing like what i experienced uh, mm-hmm. and they, they've got a video on it as well which is which is definitely worth everyone checking out um but uh yeah i, I from there like all these tailwinds i had uh oh yes on steel lake um i caught a blue walleye so in that that area they have these um like at the regular walleye but they actually have uh and I'm sorry, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's a defect in a chromosome um, in these in these walleye. Uh, oh, yeah. So a blue walleye. It's it's these. I wonder. I don't know if I have a picture handy. I, I don't. But uh, if I mean, it's in my Steel River video, if if you scroll through, it's literally a walleye, like it's a, a fish, um, and they they're usually gold or, or bronze, and these ones were blue for whatever reason, like blue, like like. Uh, like if, uh, if if you're like sucking on a candy, like a blue lollipop or something, that's kind of what it looks like. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's this this uh, weird defect in in a chromosome in certain uh, certain systems, and it's like a sorry waterway system. So in the Steel River system, all these walleye have this this defect, and it's uh, the slime uh, on the outside of their their scales, I guess. Now I'm not an expert. I don't want to. I don't want to be like uh pushing too many facts here but uh oh, <laughs> yeah you're going yeah. I, this is yeah. my one of my new partners Ingo, right the, the yeah. guy I did walk well, me with and uh yes i think so Ingo. <laughs> yeah dennis and i were talking about uh the possibility of him doing the, the steel river uh next or this summer so i think it's set in stone now yeah well yeah it's gonna happen oh yeah so <laughs> Um, I don't so, want to ramble on too, too much. If, but, I, uh, if, that, I, if I can oh, add, yeah. uh, you know, I, I'm going to tell everybody in the chat that if you've not watched any of Ben's videos, and if you only ever watch one of his videos, make sure you watch this one on the Steel River trip. But if you have watched any of other any other of Ben's videos um, leading up to that particular video, you're actually going to see a real transition in this young fella here. And, and <laughs> Don't 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 be shy over this, but you can see that you were absolutely beaming for that entire trip. Oh, and you you paid homage to people who who you look up to in the YouTube community. Uh, you had Jay uh, Jay and Sherry in there listed. You had uh, Northern Scavenger, and all sitting within the, the the confines of that one rock, that one cliff face that was sitting behind you. And there were a couple of other YouTubers too, um, uh, John and Aaron, and, and, and a few others, where you can actually see, like, it, it, it was like just something came over you, right? And then if you watch oh, yeah. all the way to the end, and I really shouldn't be giving away too much because everybody <laughs> really does need to see this trip. But uh, your 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 ending scene there when you're sitting on the beach and what you say and, and of of how like you we'll, we'll call it your recap of the trip. Um, yeah, to me, to me, that whole video really personified you as as somebody who's going to be going someplace here on YouTube. It's uh, oh, yeah, it's, uh, that that was really cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for saying that. That's that yeah. uh, that means a lot coming from you. That's uh, you, cause you're someone I've I've looked up to for for a, a number of years now, actually. So, oh, thank you. That's Gosh. that's super cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah, that that trip. Uh, like I said, like it, it changed my life. Um, then, and I could go on and on about the fishing cause, cause you know me, but, um, there were certain moments on that trip. Um, and without giving away too, too much of the video, I, uh, I, I have to mention the wolf that I saw. Uh, there was, there was on, I think it was day eight or nine. Um, and I actually, I talked a little bit about this uh, a few weeks ago. I, I, Dennis, uh, had me on. Just uh, chat. What do you what do you call it when you bring someone up to ask them questions? Yeah, just Whatever, guess. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But uh, I talked a little bit about this wolf encounter that I had on the Steel River, um, and it was it was a morning where I had uh, planned on getting up at like the crack of dawn. I wanted to cover a bunch of ground, um, 
and, uh, or, or cover a bunch of water, I should say, cause I'm paddling. Uh, but I totally slept in, I, I wanted this early start and I slept until like 9am and I was kind of kicking myself for it. And then I was just like, okay, I'm in no rush today, whatever. And I was just sipping my coffee and then I went down to the water to, uh, wash my coffee pot. And I'm like making all kinds of noise. I'm like washing my pot in, in the sand. It was like kind of a, it's a cobble kind of gravelly bottom. And well, there's like rocks going into this metal pot and it's echoing across the lake. And I, and I look across and there's this like piece of driftwood. And I could have sworn it was a piece of driftwood, but I hadn't seen it there before. And it was like maybe like 500 feet away. And, uh, I'm like looking at it, looking at it. And I swear I stared at this for like two full minutes uh, and then it moved and it started walking and, and I knew I was like, oh, okay, what is that? So I run back to my tent and I grab my camera and I, I brought along um, this big uh, camera lens, it's a, like big 300 millimeter lens, which is not huge in terms of camera standards, but that's pretty big to bring out on a canoe trip. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I cursed it the whole time because it adds a, quite a bit of extra weight on, in my pack. But I was so glad I brought it. And so I, I zoom right in and I was like, are you kidding me? That's a wolf. And I, it, was, it was a white wolf because usually uh, wolves are like kind of gray, mixed gray, brown. Um, and a uh, little side note, on the way up to that trip, I had seen a black wolf run across the highway, across Highway 17 uh, on my way up to that trip. I was okay. I I was so spoiled on that trip. Yeah, yeah. but uh, it's funny, so you know. I, I I I still say it was stock footage. Um, yeah, I, I don't believe <laughs> you know, that I you should have no, like, well, done this selfie guy hasn't mode. Seen, like even a moose in like the last ten years, <laughs> right? I see nothing, man. I see eagles. I see fish. You know, yeah, uh, yeah. Red squirrels, chipmunks. Like man, I. <laughs> big, I totally should have done that. Yeah, should have done the selfie mode where, uh, like, with me in the frame, you know, oh, with no. the wolf in the background. But uh, yeah, so I, I filmed this thing for like ten seconds, and my camera battery died, and and I'm like, "Are you kidding me?" And and it's walking closer and closer to me. So I'm like, "Okay," so I run back to the tent, and this time I grabbed a couple extra batteries as well as my bear spray and my knife. Not that I'm wasn't looking to go toe to toe with a wolf or anything, but I was like, "Okay, well." Like, got to protect myself somehow if this does yeah. turn a little greasy and uh sure enough it just kept like it would trot like maybe whatever 50 feet and then stop and then look at me and then it would walk like 50 more feet stop look at me and it was getting closer and closer and it was like just the perfect moment where it was like just kind of posing for me right and uh this is uh the interesting thing is when uh I was talk, telling this story a, a few weeks ago and, and Kevin Callan was, was listening in there. He, he had asked me, uh, like, where do I find the balance between uh, experiencing a moment like that that's so beautiful and, like, getting the footage? Like, is, does the camera kind of become an obstacle between you and the moment? And um, I, I, I can't remember what, what answer I gave him, but I thought a lot about that afterwards. And, and uh he, he, he raises a good point. It is, it is very, very important to live in the moment. Um, but a big part of what I do, and, and uh, like I said, like a big part of what I'm passionate about is capturing that. And I love, I love that I was able to, um, like, it, like that wolf stopped for me. It, it almost seemed like it, it, it stopped and said, okay, get your footage. I'm like, it's, it's free. Take the photo <laughs> whatever, and, then, and then ran along. So um I think he, like I said, he does raise a, a really good point about um, kind of like who cares about like getting the footage, like just look at the wolf. It's amazing. But um, I kind of uh, respect both fields of that argument um, where, where I am there to, to film. I, I, I do want to tell my story and, yeah. and then, and uh, yeah, that day I uh, like, I continued paddling along and after seeing that wolf, I saw a swan, and then I saw a moose. Uh, it was a cow moose with her calf. It was like a, I think it was that year's calf too, a little baby. And uh, then I saw Rainbow Falls, which is a huge, beautiful, like I think it's a 20 or 40 foot waterfall. Uh, but it, it was just like the perfect day and it, like amidst a perfect trip. Like, like um, I, I don't want to talk too much about the, like the video that I want people to watch, but uh yeah, it so, was sometimes we're, we're blessed with uh, some trips that are 100% worth remembering. 
and capturing oh, yeah. it. Oh yeah. Sometimes you get them trips where it's like, God, I hope that never <laughs> hope I and never it, it was, experience that again. Right? Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, and I've been on those trips too. I've been yeah. on those trips. Um and I think that one of the biggest things for me too is that it was uh, a trip full of firsts. It was like uh, my first big, big trip. I've done I've done a handful of solo trips like in Halliburton Highlands and around Algonquin and stuff like that. But um, I just felt so far from home and I, I, so, I felt so out there in the world. It was just amazing. Um, That's cool. That's good stuff. Hey, I don't know. Do you, uh, do you have to, uh, do, you, do I have time to just, say one more thing? Uh, we're just going to take a quick commercial break here. Oh, yeah, so please, please do. Please do. My, uh, my sponsors, when we get back with the second half of the show, we'll carry on with a few more stories and experiences. And then maybe we'll invite a few people on the panel and we'll uh, take some yeah. of the questions that I've been starring in the uh, chat. So if anybody does have a question for Ben and you're too shy to come up here on screen and ask, uh, by all means, please just put the word question before I will start and we will get to your questions after the break here. So we'll be back in a short moment, Ben. Awesome. There's nothing like being out there. For over 50 years, we've been connecting people with nature by building classic Canadian canoe designs using the best materials available. We built a reputation on gearable, dependable canoes that allow you to focus on what's important, whether that's unplugging in remote wilderness, spending quality time with your favorite people, or nailing the perfect line. Visit novacraft.com to find the perfect canoe for you and locate your nearest authorized dealer. Tonight's episode of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show is brought to you by Kit Products, Stick Stoves and Reflector Ovens proudly made in Canada. Algonquin Outfitters with five key locations in and around Algonquin Park to serve your backcountry needs. Salus Marine, keeping you safe on the water since 1999. Ostrom Outdoors, custom fit canoe packs and barrel harnesses. Badger Paddles, handcrafted canoe paddles made to order. And Novacraft Canoes, connecting you with nature in Canadian-made canoes since 1970. And welcome back to the second half of Canoe Hounds Outdoor Adventure Show. First show for the 2024 season. Tonight we have Ben Beauchamp as our guest. Uh, let's bring him back up on panel because uh, I'm sure we got a lot more here to talk about, Ben. Uh, yeah, man, you, you, you've, you've had these trips. Uh, I think we've covered it, the steel trip as much as I might think we want to, just so that people are going to go watch the video, right? Yes. We, we want yep. them to go, go over and watch. Uh, let's get some numbers there for, uh, for, for Ben, for sure. So, uh, yeah, you, you've had, you, you've done the Tomogamy trip, uh, the, the steel river trip. Um, you also had, uh, uh, Spanish River. You you did a collaboration on the Spanish River with another YouTuber that's been on the show here in the past, uh, Tosh Self Propelled. Yes, yeah, that that was an incredible trip as well. Um, that that was kind of uh, after doing that steel trip, I kind of this is my own kind of mental thing, but I had this like thought that it was it was going to be t like tough to do trips after that because it was so amazing, and I was mm -hmm. like. Like how how can you follow that up? Like like am I gonna like obviously I'm always gonna enjoy myself like doing these outdoors trips or whatever. But I was like just how, how like how could you top that? And uh, I had talked to Tosh. Um, we did a Palmer Fest at at uh, Paddler Co op. There's there's Palmer Rapids there. It's a, kind of a big whitewater canoeing festival and and a bunch of uh, paddling enthusiasts just show up and they do. Uh, live music and and a uh, bunch of whitewater you're right on the rapids there and you camp out and um so a, a few different creators were there and tosh was one of them and um i had met him at the outdoor show as well and uh kind of kind of gotten to know him a little bit um but like there's so so much going on at the show you don't really get to like get, have, get too deep into conversation and uh but at this uh palmer fest um i i really got talking to tosh and we uh, talked about doing this trip together and a few weeks later he, he uh, talked about doing the Spanish river. And so we, <laughs> this, uh, 
this trip, um, it was it was kind of funny because, like I said, I had talked to him a, a few times, but I didn't like know. Obviously, you really get to know someone when you go out on a canoe trip with them. It's it's a bunch of one on one time, and but I didn't really know him beforehand, and so. For the Spanish River, we started in uh, Cartier, uh, which is just outside of uh, out of Sudbury, and we got on the train there, and we took the train all the way up to a little community called Biscotasing, which is on uh, Biscotasi Lake. I, I hope I'm saying that right. My, my favorite little train stop in the world, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, right at the general it's... store on the beach, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, we, um, we got on the train. Actually, before we got on the train, there was another group of people that were there was I think it was um 10 10 or 12 guys that were doing like their big annual trip and uh they recognized Tosh and they were like hey is that Tosh self propelled and uh here I am like I I'm just so happy to be out there with him and now he's getting recognized and so they they were like talking to him and so we get on the train and I guess one of the guys in their group was celebra- celebrating a birthday and so we uh we all got invited and we got uh, we sang happy birthday to this random dude who we didn't know. <laughs> and so it was like already a party on the train. It was just a, a good time. And uh, when we got dropped off at this, this, uh, this train stop, um, we unloaded the canoes and unloaded our packs. We're like, okay, we're good to go. And uh, the, the train guys closed the door and whatever we waved goodbye. They said, have a great trip. And the train started moving and Tosh realized that he forgot his Pelican case on the train with he had his he had like two gopros he had his drone his gps uh i think his wallet was in there and the train's taken off so like he looks at me split second he's like oh, oh, okay i'm and he starts running and uh he jumps on the train if if, if uh if people haven't seen this it's definitely worth checking out because i barely know this guy and uh and like my first experience of tosh is him like pulling some total like James Bond Mission Impossible like he jumps on the train he's holding on and it, it's it's moving quick and he uh, he had this moment of realization where it was like okay yeah, like if I don't hop off this train it's gonna take me all the way to I think the next stop was White River yeah and uh, so so he jumped off and luckily uh, they they stopped like I don't know what we would have done if uh, they continued on I think yeah well, there was no plan B for that we just and luckily they stopped. Um, and uh, that was kind of a, a perfect moment because as as scary as that was, and um, like it, it went from oh no, like my camera gear to oh, like is Tosh going to get like badly injured, and and we're just out here. Um, and uh, it was just like the perfect icebreaker, and like it, we we like laughed so much about that, like all throughout that trip. And uh, that was October, and we were like totally blessed again with the hottest weather in October. It felt like July out there. It was like 25, 30 degrees the whole week. I'd never seen this before in my life, but we were getting annihilated by black flies the entire time in October. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, it was just a great trip. And one of the biggest things for me on that trip, I, I was talking about how I uh, was, wasn't totally comfortable with the white water. And uh, there's all kinds of white water on, on the Spanish river. And Tasha is, is uh, much more experienced than I am. And it was just great to be out there with him. And um, some of the bigger rapids, like he would, he would get out and he would like have the, uh, the throw bag, which is for, for anyone that doesn't know, it's a, it's a bag full of a rope. So you can kind of throw it out uh, to whoever's like, if you tip your canoe you can throw it out into the rapids and, and the, the rope kind of like uncoils and uh, it's kind of like a little safety net for you. Um, and uh, luckily, like we didn't even. Oh yeah, there's Tosh there. It, 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 that was such an amazing time, and and uh, it's cool because like day one, like we're we're just like laughing so much about the train incident, and then day two, you start like talking, getting to know each other a little more, and then like by day three, I felt like I knew the guy my entire life, right? And uh, it was just awesome. We also had more amazing fish catch. Like, uh, I, I caught, like, a, I didn't have a scale or a measuring tape on me, but a monster pike on that trip. Um, and, uh, and so much fun whitewater. That was, that kind of, uh, made me fall in love with whitewater. I, I, I think moving forward, uh, my, my trips might be a little more whitewater focused. Um, yeah. but the Spanish uh, is a great river for that, uh, because yeah. there, oh. there, there are some easy and then there's some that are quite difficult, but, 
every one that's really difficult has a beautiful portage around it, right? If uh, oh, exactly, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, the thing with with uh, that trip, I had actually, um, I almost want to do it again because I had a big, let's big go. idea. I'll do yeah, it for yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Um, cause I'm, uh, I'm big, I, I bought myself a drone this year and, uh, that's kind of been, um, like it's been super effective in, in like making my videos that much better. Uh, and I really wanted to fly my drone on that, that trip, but, uh, it's a provincial park. So, uh, you, you're not allowed to fly drones uh, within provincial parks. Um, to explain tomogamy, I actually got, uh, in contact with the superintendent for the tomogamy cluster. And I kind of worked out a deal with him that if he wanted to, uh, if he let me fly my drone within the provincial parks, uh, he could use the footage for whatever he wants. And, and so he was like, yeah, right on. Like, like let's do it. I did the same for uh, Nagagamasis Provincial Park up near Hearst that I was talking about earlier. Um, but I, I, so I reached out to the Spanish River and they didn't get back to me. And then the day we got back from that trip, they were like, oh, we would have been totally interested. Oh, really? And, so that's yeah. how, there you go. There's, there's a, there's a tidbit for anybody that, uh, any, any of our adventurers out there that yeah. do use drone footage, but can't think they can't is, uh, maybe sometimes all you got to do is tickle the right ears. Right. So, yeah. And I'm not, um, I don't know if that's something I, that that's not like the way to do it or anything. I don't know, uh, really if they pulled strings for me or whatever it's you know with with government it's it's kind of there's a lot of layers you have to go through like like one guy can't just say yes um but uh but yeah they were they agreed because i think they you need a certain uh permit to to fly like aircrafts within the parks um right. and the only reason they agreed to uh let me fly is because they got in contact with their marketing team and the marketing team was interested in getting a few more drone shots of the area or whatever. So, um, I don't know, like, I, I, I don't want uh, anyone to be let down if, if they, if they say no, that's, that's all I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. No, that's pretty cool. So, you know, the, the one thing, um, and I, I remember when Tosh was on the show, uh, Joe Robinette popped on and Joe, Joe was, ta or, uh, sorry, Tosh is talking about, um, uh, or one of the questions come well, how, how did this collaboration come about? And Tosh said, well, he reached out to Joe and said, well, you know what? We get out there and we don't hit it off. You know, we're, if we're button heads or something, we'll just go our own separate ways type of thing. Right. Was yeah, that the type yeah. of the type of thing that you felt out there too? Like, or, or was it like when, when you do a collaboration, say with the guys from Mad for Maple or, or, you know, Tosh, is there, can you feel a connection right away type of thing? Is it something that you say, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, you know what? I, I think um, Tosh was another guy. So he, uh, with, without sounding like I'm bragging, he actually reached out to me and said, uh, if you ever wanted to do a trip, I, I, I'd be totally down. And I saw that message pop up and I was like, are you kidding me? Like, this is Tosh. Yeah. Like Tosh is sending me a message. And so I was, I was uh, like kind of starstruck by him. And, uh, so I think a lot of, um, a lot of times, like I, I don't, um, let's just say I wouldn't just do a trip with anyone. Like I, I would, I am kind of choosy with who I wanted to be with because that is a lot like, um, uh, like you're going to go out and like go out into the middle of nowhere with someone. You got to like, trust them first right. and foremost. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but, uh, it was, it was kind of nice. Like I, like I said, I, I had met Tosh at the outdoor show, we had kind of maybe gone back and forth through Instagram once or twice. And then um, I got to sit like around a campfire with him at the, uh, at the Padra co-op. And, and that's when we really got to talk. And, and uh, that's like, he, it's, it's not like I have like a, a test that you have to pass or anything like that, but I just, I really liked the conversation and I, I liked who he was as a human and, and uh, that kind of sort of made me feel comfortable going out with him. Um, and then the other thing is too, is, is, um, uh, like, I'm not, uh, I, like, this is very much a dream for me to, to make this a career. Um, I, like, I still have to work a full-time job just to like pay rent and put food on the table and stuff like that. And so I'm working with, uh, like a very tight budget when I'm doing all these videos, not that it's, um, like camping isn't expensive in itself, but doing all this travel, you got expenses with gas and, um, this past year I bought a canoe, I bought a drone, I bought all kinds of camping equipment and like all those, those expenses add up. And so basically what I'm getting at is that 
uh, I only have uh, like like so much time to put into camping, and then I have to I have to work. Uh, like I like until YouTube is paying my bills, I can't just kind of take off and go. Like I, I have to be very choosy with what makes sense for my channel, and and because uh, each video I kind of see it as an investment as well, right? Yeah. Um, so so uh, I it's like believe me when I say I would absolutely love to do a trip with everyone. And, and, uh, there's, there's so many of my friends that, uh, I'd love to get out with as well. And I will like it, it'll, it'll just be take some time. It might, if it's not this summer, it'll be next summer, but, but, uh, I just, I want to make sure that, uh, it makes sense for, uh, the future of the channel to, so I can keep doing this too. Right. Yeah. And as a YouTuber, uh, even YouTube promotes, uh, collaborative efforts between youtube content creators because it helps build your market outside of your market right mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, like, it's the cross advertising so uh continue yeah. to do so man because you know do, doing that is only going to help your numbers grow and uh yeah. you, you you could stand to learn a lot from you know your fellow youtubers uh you know oh, you're yeah. going to share stories camera techniques uh you know yeah just uh general ideas on, on tripping or or gear selection and and you know the type of shots and how to how to tell a story these are all good things so if i keep it up man i, I love i've said this a million times on this show i absolutely love watching collaborative videos because I, I i love watching it when your video comes out when tasha's video comes out and you can see the perspective from both angles right it's a yeah it's a, what he sees through his eyes and what you're seeing through your eyes and we're getting to see it through both your eyes. So that's, uh, I, I really enjoy that. Yeah. You, you know what? I, um, I don't want to say anything bad about anything at all. Um, I think school is a very necessary thing. School is very good. I personally never loved school. Um, <laughs> and I'll, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, is that, um, I think I've learned so much more. Um, and then that, that also comes with being like in, like I'm very passionate about what I do, but I've learned so much from just making friends with all these people in the outdoor community and kind of gaining all these different perspectives. Like you're saying, like, I feel like I've learned more in the last year doing that than I have in all of my schooling ever. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and may, maybe that has something to do with me just paying attention to what they're talking about. <laughs> sure thing yeah i'm sitting there in math class like thinking about my next camping trip but <laughs> yeah but uh yeah. then i'm just gonna throw the link on right now in case uh yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. one or two people would like to pop up and ask a question or maybe uh uh join us for a few short moments it's very easy to uh to to do just click on that link follow all the prompts make sure you shut off the volume on your youtube feed and just go by the volume on the uh, the StreamYard feed, and we'd love to, to have a couple of you pop in to, uh, to ask Ben a question. In the meantime, we do have a lot of questions that have uh, popped up here in the chat, and uh, maybe we'll pop a couple of them on, and then we'll get on with a few of the other things that, uh, that we had planned to talk about. Uh, let's see here. Going back quite a ways, these are questions from earlier, probably most of them from the first half of the show. Uh, the Paddleheads uh, popped in. And we're asking, uh, how important is the fishing for you? Do you plan trips based on fishing or certain species, or is it more of a destination? Uh, from a scale of one to 10, 10 being like super important, I would say it's like a 9.9. .9. Like it, it's, uh, fishing is, is very important to me. Um, I, I kind of started, uh, like the, like, the reason I do all this camping, I had in my, like I had this idea of paddling into or, or hiking into these lakes uh, that maybe had never seen a lure before. And I, I was like, like had such a fantasy over, over this idea of like going to these untouched areas. Um, and uh, that kind of like, once I got my fishing fix, so I finally like, like I've, I've always fished my whole life, but like doing all these backcountry trips, like I've definitely gotten into some of the best fishing I've ever experienced. And, and uh once i got that fix i kind of realized like wow like i i like i love the outdoors for so much more than just fishing so um i love all of it fishing is it will forever be important to me um and uh, i don't necessarily plan it around the fishing but if i'm if i'm on like a multi-day canoe trip and there's there's a lake that's like totally out of the way but i've i heard that it's a honey hole for whatever like big big pike or or 
nice trout or whatever, I will totally go out of my way to, to go check it out. Yeah. It's, it's super important to me. Yeah. And it, it's really cool. Cause I've seen in a few of your videos there where, you know, you, you're paddling along and all of a sudden uh, the bite is on. And yeah. before you know it there, like, you know, you, you, you've sat there for three hours and you put yourself behind schedule, but the yeah. fish are biting. You, <laughs> you know what? I, uh, I have to give a little shout out. I just got a text from uh, my, my childhood best friend, um, my buddy Ethan, he uh, he used to call me uh, Last Cast Ben. That was wow. my uh, my nickname because because anytime we'd always go out to this local pond and uh, anytime uh, like they they'd be ready to go. Okay, like we're we're ready to go home. And I go okay, Last Cast, Last Cast, <laughs> and I yeah, do yeah. twenty Last Casts. <laughs> yeah, wow. We uh we got two uh two takers here in the basement. We'll bring them up here one at a time. Uh, we'll just get a question or two in from each of them there. Uh, let's start with Evan LaFave. You were first one to pop. Yes. How you doing, Evan? How's it going, brother? Hey, hey. How's the audio? Am I okay? You're yeah, sounding you sound fine, man. You're sounding fine. Cool. Good to see you guys. Uh, one question for you. Yeah. Well, maybe it's, it's a two-parter. Uh, 1.5. What is your least favorite fish to catch? Ooh. Uh, you know what? The first one that comes to mind... Um, we uh, used to do a ton of fishing on the Capiscasing River, up up in Capiscasing, of course. And uh, there were uh, catfish in that river, which were invasive. And uh, they were like, just like, I nothing against catfish, but they were uh, like supposedly uh, affecting the walleye populations. They were feeding on the eggs and stuff. Mm. And uh, when you catch them, they like just slimy and smelly. And, and like you were hoping for a walleye and, and uh, they kind of like, bark at you even though they you think they'd meow but they they're like catfish like are like rawr, rawr. Yeah, um, that's so, crazy. yeah and so we never liked catching those that was uh that was always kind of like a, a disappointment whenever they they came up i knew it wasn't going to be pike because you know I've seen <laughs> yeah. it. hey a lot of people in northern ontario uh have a, a strong hatred for pike too because they're not as good eaten as as uh pickerel or, or walleye and and they're super hard to clean but I don't know. I, I just love the excitement. Yeah. When uh, and then uh, point five, the question would be: What's <laughs> like you have like a uh, species that's on your list, like a bucket list species? Oh man, uh, it, it was lake trout this year, um, but I, I managed to catch. One. I don't think I actually caught one on video, but uh, I I caught one at a friend's cottage, which I'd been going to for years, but I never caught one. And and just I I think I caught two there this year. Nice. Um, I think the the only other one that comes to mind, and uh, I I might get in trouble for saying this. I don't know if you're even allowed to target them, but if by chance a sturgeon wants to bite my hook when I'm targeting another species, <laughs> <laughs> um, I I did uh, I actually uh, in 2014 my dad and I used to to fish in a walleye tournament, and uh, it was uh, it was a big deal. Like it was it was like a ten thousand dollar prize. And I hooked into something absolutely massive and I'm like reeling it in. And we thought we had this $10,000 fish and like I thought it was a big walleye and turned out to be a sturgeon. Um, wow. And so I, I, I have caught one in my life. It was uh, like, whatever, like maybe a four Jeez. footer. Um, I thought it was like a hundred pounds, but it was probably like, like 15 pounds. Um, but that's always kind of like a mystical one. A, a sturgeon have been around since the dinosaurs and, they're just such a cool fish. They're like a like a shark in Ontario. You had some unique answers, Ben. I liked it. <laughs> Thank you, man. Much love, my brother. Much Evan, love feel to free you, to man. stick around for the green room afterwards if you like. Oh it. yeah, yeah, you better. Sounds good. Okay, buddy. Yeah, Thanks very much back. for popping in. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, everyone. Awesome, and and we got another familiar face here because we just finished talking about this uh, superhero there chasing trains. We uh -oh. got Tosh coming, coming to us from the Tosh hey, Mobile. Yeah, yeah. Hey, how's it going? This guy. Great, uh, buddy. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You're. Where are you right now? I am in uh, southwestern Arizona. How cool is that? Nice, man. Yeah. Nice. So I'm uh, sitting in the van here. I've been living down well across the southern U.S. for the last seven or eight weeks. Yeah. Oh, that's Beauty. so awesome. So awesome. Yeah. He's, uh, he's I just wanted to pop in and say, like, what a pleasure it was to be on that Spanish road trip with you. Um, I see people commenting all the time and, like, just talking in the chat. 
about your attitude. And I know we talked about this out there. I said this to you before, but it was such a pleasure just to be out there. What you guys see from Ben here, just the enthusiasm was so infectious on that trip. Like we had just, just a wild time. And it was such a positive experience. Everything from my stupidity of chasing down a moving train to like <laughs> these massive pikey cuts and all these white, like even in the pouring rain, we're running white water and he's got this <laughs> massive grin on his face. Oh, uh, yeah. it was just such a great experience. Yeah, that was yeah. I will I will cherish that trip forever. But I'm I'm like super excited for our next one too. That was, that was yeah, funny. That like, was my question coming on here was where are we going next? Like we got to make a plan for this year because it's got to top that. Oh my yeah. Uh, I I don't know. Let's talk. But I I want it to be a big river. It's got to be something epic. <laughs> I'm I'm comfortable in the white water now. Yeah, I, I watched you get the white water bug. On the <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of whitewater yeah. bugs, you you got a you got a real love for the whitewater. I know, hey, Tosh? Oh, I've had an addiction for many many years yeah. to the whitewater. Oh, it's a serious problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I, I my trips, yours are planned around where you find fish, and mine are planned uh, around how much do I have to portage and how much whitewater is there to run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was awesome. That we we had a, a couple moments where it was like really like downpouring on us. And every time, like, we'd just look at each other and just be smiling at each other, like, isn't this great? Like, just yeah. just getting drenched just or soaked in blood. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Cracking jokes yeah. and drenched. I forgot my rain pants, so I'm absolutely soaked from the waist down the entire time. <laughs> hey, didn't yeah. your, uh, your tent soak through the one day, too, didn't it? it might, on the, I think that was the last day. Could, could be getting that wrong. Oh, I think. Because I had the bathtub floor in it, yeah, I I, I think my mm. feet pushed over the bathtub and water came in. Anyways, there was water in the tent in the morning. That's right. Yeah, but, yeah, that was an awesome. That trip. that last day of that trip, we, uh, I think that was probably the longest day that we had paddled. We just like like you know when you get that homeward bound energy, and uh, you just kind of want to get out of there. Um, and it was pouring rain that whole day, and we didn't. I actually stopped filming at the end of the Spanish river. Um, and I kind of wrapped up the video there or sorry, it was, it's not technically the end of the Spanish, but, um, we at Agnew, Lake. Got at Agnew Lake and then that stretch of Agnew Lake was like another 10 K and, uh, whatever headwinds I missed on the steel river, we got on Agnew Lake. And that was like, uh, I, there was one moment where we kind of, uh, both took separate shores for whatever reason. We just kind of, we were just paddling along and I was on the like whatever East shore and he was on the West and, and uh, he stopped off at this Island and he was kind of like, he had pulled up and like, just took a little break. I think he was stretching his legs and he could see me across, but I was like, like maybe half a kilometer away. And he's like, like waving. And, uh, and uh, so I decided I was going to paddle over to him. And I was like, uh, there were like, swells coming through at this point and i was paddling kind of uh, like yeah. the waves were going this way i had my canoe going this way and i was going up and then like kind of rocking like this and i got really nervous at, at one point there and and yeah, uh, but we made scary. it out alive yeah it was super sketchy and then um one thing that, that sticks with me from that trip too is that we were so hungry after that day and uh, we stopped in espanola at that uh, at that wendy's and they were like going into like that was like their last day before doing major renovations, and we stood there for like forty five minutes waiting for a burger. <laughs> we were so hungry, and it just took we forever. And then when it finally, right. yeah, it finally came. We're just like oh, oh, two bites. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, yeah that's Tosh, funny. I have to ask you a quick question. So, what what are you doing down there in uh, Arizona? You said. Yep. Yeah, I've been, uh, I think, through 11 states now. I uh, spent a couple of weeks in Texas, uh, up through New Mexico, and now I think I've, I've been almost two weeks in Arizona. And to be honest, I thought I would film a lot more when I came down here. The, my plan was to just travel in the van and go see some of the you know popular sites and find some of the less popular ones and you know, live on the road. And mm -hmm. the van life side of it, I absolutely love like more than i ever anticipated i would just the like waking up in a different place every day if you don't like the neighbors you just turn the key and drive away like, <laughs> right, right. I, I've, yeah. I've slept in everything from walmart parking lots to 
the middle of absolute nowhere. I had um, three or four uh, wild burrows, like donkeys, come up to the van within about 30 feet of the van the other day. I've oh, seen geez. like wild horses, um, javelinas, all kinds of stuff. Um, the problem has been finding places that I can film because mm-hmm. now in the U S most national parks and a lot of the state parks, it's all permit based. So you have to apply for uh-huh. a permit. And so there's an application fee now and it's like two weeks to process. And I kind of had an idea of this coming down here, but my style is like, I'll just go wing it and I'll figure it out when I get down there. And mm-hmm. eh, some of it's worked out. Really? Some of it hasn't. But... So just, just to record video, if you're doing some sort of hike or adventure, you have to actually apply for a permit to record. Yeah. So I, I had That's lined up to, to rent a canoe and float down the Rio Grande along the um, U.S. Mexico border. And there's amazing canyons. And it is, I spent two weeks down along Big Bend and couldn't film very much at all because I needed a permit. It's 150 bucks just to apply for a permit. And it takes about 14 days minimum to get it. And then you have to list all your equipment, everything you're doing. And it's it's basically the same permit process you would have to if you were a production for a TV show. Yeah. Now, if you if you film without the permits, it's like serious penalties too. Like you like major yeah. fines. Yeah. They say straight up when I talk to them, they're like, if we find out that you put a video on YouTube that you don't have a permit for, like they'll go back and and look to see if you've applied for the permit. And they said, we'll prosecute you to prosecute you to the full extent of the law, which is, I think it's a $50,000 fine. <laughs> I yeah, think it's, it's that it's much. <laughs> Cause you took a picture of a bird in a national park. <laughs> so I, yes. Yeah, so some stuff you can get away with. If it's just, you know, for your own personal Instagram or something like that, but if it's anything that's monetized and they told me in big Ben that, even if your channel isn't monetized, YouTube can monetize it. So therefore it's a monetized video and you still need a permit. So crazy. Yeah. I went up to grand Canyon, ran into the same problem. So it's uh, see what I can find, but yeah. Well, the good news is there's that will, uh, that's going back to uh, what we're talking about with Kevin Callen talking about, uh, the experience versus the, the camera. Uh, you're, you're just 100% experiencing it, which like, who knows, maybe that's better. It's been a little bit of a break to put the camera away and just, uh, just hang out. And I think I actually needed that just, uh, just to relax (laughs) and, and enjoy it. Like a really, uh, casual pace of things, doing whatever I want, kind of just wake up. And if I feel like hiking, if I feel like driving, I'm on my own time, my own schedule. Pretty cool. Tosh, I'm not sur- sure if you can see the comment I got on screen that says, but that's nice of them to at least watch your YouTube channel. A view is a view. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not going to be worth it in the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. $50,000. <laughs> anyway, Tosh, I'll, uh, I'll, get I'll get out of here and let somebody else. I'll get out of here and let somebody else. But if you want to stick around for the green room, feel free to do so. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, bud, yeah, awesome, awesome to see you. Great to Cheers. Go. We'll talk Cheers after. Fun. All right. That's cool. Yeah, uh, you know what? That's uh down. He, he's uh, he's living the life right now. Eh? A little bit of oh, yeah. travel stuff like that. That's uh that's always a good thing. That, that oh, van life. Have... Oh, huh? sorry. I was just gonna say that van life. That's got to be like unmatched freedom. Like what he's talking about. Yeah. Just like wake up anywhere you want. Yeah, that's a other other than there. yeah, other than not filming. That's that's not freedom, but. Yeah, for sure. And another familiar oh, face to you. Here we got uh, hey. Jay, the backcountry popping that's in. Other other than, than, yeah, other than not filming, that's that's not freedom. But. He's, oh, he's got a he's working oh. on his audio. Brother, got to turn off hey. the YouTube. Button. There we go. There, there he is. Hey guys, I Dennis, you just brought me up so quick that you weren't prepared, huh? So what's up, man? <laughs> um, I was not prepared. That's the story of my life. Not too much, but um, yeah, we're just getting a dump of snow here, so we're just feeling very wintry. Nice, nice. Yeah. I'm uh, it is dropping slush out of the air in Toronto right now. Yeah, there's like, yeah. like seriously, like two inches of slush. 
Well, winter's winter, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I had yeah. two questions for you, actually. Um, I had asked one earlier. Um, what is your, now you must have, I know you're always formulating plans and nothing's in stone, but do you have a plan for your big trip for next year, for 2024? Ooh, um, yeah, like you said, nothing's set in stone yet. And I don't know if, uh, is it, is it cool, Dennis, if I talk about this now, we were, we were planning on talking about, uh, future trips. Go, like, go for it, man. Uh, yeah, Jay's cool enough. I can, I can talk. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I'm um, chill. I'm chill, man. So I actually, I am, so I'm going to continue on to, uh, do some like smaller winter trips, like in the immediate future. Um, but I have this certain drive and i i have no clue why because it it could be miserable but i want to do like a big winter trip um do like like a week or like i don't know if i could do 10 days that might just be a little depressing in the winter but but uh, i want to do like a a huge winter trip um i would have done it already but uh, the ice conditions right now are just a little iffy uh leading up to like the last like week or so um but uh this summer, like, uh, I, I I really don't know where I'm thinking yet, but I something big, and I, I will definitely kind of aim like northwestern Ontario. Like, um, I'm looking at maybe something like Wabakimi or Woodland Caribou or something like in that area. Um, I uh, was talking to a family friend about uh, the Missinabe River. Um, that's kind of another, another famous one that, um, I think everyone should experience. There's, there's a list of like iconic rivers in, in Ontario that, that, uh, I will definitely have to hit, but yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, it's still very much up in the air right now. Um, but, uh, you bet I'm going to be out there (laughs) somewhere. I figured you'd be there. We were just trying to sneak up and see you in the bush. Oh yeah. Yeah. Catch you one day somewhere deep in, uh, in Wabakimi just about to get on the Kafka and then there's Sherry and I. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I haven't seen anyone for three weeks. <laughs> I just hear you singing. I, I can see you guys doing something like that too, Jay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that happened. I'm, I'm sure you've told that story about, uh, about running into uh, Joe and Tosh on maybe not. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of, of a bear coming out of the forest in spring. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, uh, who is an absolute gentle giant and a, and a beautiful soul. But when his barreling voice and his big old Royal X canoe come in through your, through your campsite and it's a raging, we were at the, at the top of a, a raging springtime falls and uh, yeah. And I was just getting coffee set up. Cher was sort of packing up in the tent and Tosh just comes through Good morning, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh, I almost went for a swim." <laughs> but oh, we're yeah. okay. We're okay now. My the part two of my question, uh, Ben, was: Are you going to go? You've spoken a couple of times about the uh, outdoor adventure show in Toronto. Oh. Are you are you planning on attending this year, brother? Okay, I'm really gl- uh, glad that you brought this up. Uh, I yes, I, I will be there, and I hope to see you there if you can make it out. We're um, going to try. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I don't know if it's like public knowledge yet that that is like the hangout of all the YouTubers. Like, um, for if anyone wants to like meet any any big names in the in the YouTube world of all the camping YouTubers, I think pretty much everyone made it out. I think with uh, with the exception of Lost Lakes because he's way out there. Um, but uh, there was like a bunch of the big names and oh, <laughs> I see. Uh, super good camping is saying shh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh that's uh i i would say that that that's uh one of the, the best opportunities to just come and hang out uh have a chat with someone maybe take a selfie or whatever and and uh i know that i was like i was there last year like totally like fangirling over all those those big names um and uh yeah it's it's like super chill like i um dennis uh was saying that he's going to going to be there as well and like his his little booth is going to be the hangout spot um Dennis, I was actually thinking about, uh, and this is another uh, idea that I actually have to credit to my dad. I don't know if this is possible, but um, what would you think about uh, having like a little section like next to your booth with like a bunch of Muskoka chairs or something like that to to kind of have that little hangout facility? Maybe we could like simulate a campfire environment 
Maybe we'll we'll explore that sometime in the green room for maybe next year's show, not this year. Yeah, yeah. Because I I mentioned that. Yeah, that's what I figured. And and uh, Evan was saying, uh, Evan LaFive, who's who's just up here. uh, I was talking to him about this, and he was saying like, it's it's not cheap to get a booth. It's uh, yeah, like yeah. But anyways, yeah. uh, I will definitely be there. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you there too. That that was we we had such a good time. That's that's where I met Jay and, and Sherry as well. Um, that's right. Yeah, and uh, really got to know them there. I, I I will pass on this invitation though. Um, I always when I'm at the show uh, for the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'm always at the Kid Products booth, which is right next to the Paddling and Adventure stage. Yeah. And the fellows over at Kid Products are a great 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 marketing ploy on their part. But they're they're always kind enough to give me like you know a little four foot section of their booth that they pay so much money for, and uh, it's it's always seems to be a great conjuring spot for for YouTube personalities to to hang out and we all you know before you know it there's usually a gathering of us there all, all three of us were there and uh, and many others, and uh, you know what come on by and say hi uh, come on over say hi be the first to grab a seat for the presentations at the the adventure stage and uh yeah come on by and say hello no, nothing better and you guys could probably attest to this too nothing better than actually meeting people that follow you or you know putting that face to a, a, a an emoji or you know a voice or, or somebody that you've seen on youtube or heard like you know somebody that's reached out to you it's always so nice to meet people because we are just you people <laughs> right oh yeah we are all oh, yeah. just you people right it's Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And having that having your booth strategically set up between the the paddling stage and the bar the beer. is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they had the they happen to have the bar right next to the last year yeah. too. That was great. Yeah. I yeah, mean, Dennis is like, oh yeah, they're all hanging out around me. <laughs> oh no, I didn't say around me. It just no, seemed I'm to just be a conjuring spot, right? Because yeah. 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 That yeah, was good. uh okay. very convenient. Yeah. Yeah, that's great, man. Uh Jay, you're welcome to stick around for the green room if you like. Cool. We're almost awesome. at capacity. So I'm gonna we're gonna move on. Did you have another question for Ben right now? Or no, no, that was it. Oh Jay, I I would love to plan a trip though soon, eh? Maybe this this summer. I'll, I'll I'd be happy to come out your way because there's there's not too much canoe tripping around Toronto. That was the my question was a thinly veiled uh invitation. We we had, <laughs> talked, we had talked a little bit about it later last yeah. year. And it just didn't, it just didn't work out. I'm oh, sure. Oh yeah. Yeah. The French river. We, what that, that, uh, yeah. That that's, was on Thanksgiving weekend. I had to prioritize the family. Dude. Totally cool. Yeah. That's good. But now you've done that. So you don't prioritize the family anymore. It's, it's <laughs> Hey, they're listening. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. It's all family. I'm, I'm <laughs> oh, no, no, it's okay, all yeah, good. We'll definitely get to planning, brother. I'll text you. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Jay. See you in a bit. Thanks buddy. Yeah, you know, whoop. Hey, oh, Jay, there you go. Hey, hit the wrong button. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we got one more person in the basement. We'll get that person up first. But a question I do have for you, uh, Ben, is we we talked about people that you you've done collaborations with and stuff like that. Who are some of your inspirations, either whether YouTube or beyond YouTube? Uh, who inspires you to do what you're doing? Oh man. Um... Okay, well, I think the first person that I ever saw, uh, like when I was a little kid, it like has to be Survivor Man. I always watched his show, um, and th- that is so cool that you got the chance to talk to him. Um, that I think he was the one that uh, that sort of, um, like obviously, I don't even know if YouTube was really a thing. I think it was around, but it was uh, like he was the first one just to go out there and film himself. In the he's woods. the OG, right? Yeah, he's, he's, he's the, the right OG. Now. Yeah, good term. And uh, oh, so, sorry, I'd see my my aunt uh, Linda is is in the uh, comments there. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, yeah, so I think that uh, that uh, uh, he he was like my first kind of inspiration, and and um, then I found this whole like YouTube world and. Like you gotta remember, like uh, guys, like when when Joe Robinett first started making videos, like I was a little kid. Like he's been, he's been doing this for a long time, and like he was the one. Like I would be 
eight, nine years old in, in my backyard, like all my friends would be like inside playing video games or whatever. And I'm like trying to make a bow drill, lighting a fire in my backyard and because of guys like Joe Robinett. And uh, that kind of um, uh, like totally introduced me to this whole new world of, of like outdoors content creators. Of course, like uh, the Baird brothers, like I watched their segment on alone and, and follow all their, their, their stuff, Jim and Ted Baird. Um, they're like, I'm trying to think, I kind of strayed away from, uh, the, the camping side of YouTube and dove like really deep into the fishing side of YouTube. I don't know if anyone here has heard of, uh, like the Guggen squad, uh, like John B, uh, and like AP Bass and all of those guys. Uh, I, I was like totally obsessed with all their videos and, and in high school, um, I actually had like a fishing YouTube channel, um, which uh, I will tease here, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not actually going to drop a link for anyone, <laughs> but uh, it's still out there somewhere if you want to find it. Um, but uh, so I, I kind of wanted to be this like fishing YouTuber guy and I wanted to like fish in competitive tournaments and stuff. And um, then after high school, once I, uh, like I graduated and I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Like I knew I liked cameras and I wanted to like do something with video, but um, the idea of, uh, for me, like I, I love creating videos, but I'm, I'm not totally interested in creating videos for other people, like, like filming a wedding, per, like per se, or, or, uh, like I'd, I'd be happy to film like a promotional video for like a coffee shop or something, but it's just not totally my passion. Um, so I, I had this like kind of, uh, undecisiveness after high school, like didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I was, um, I was, uh, working this restaurant job, uh, just like in the kitchen and like scrubbing pans, just like thinking about what I wanted to do. And, um, eventually well, once I got to college, um, still like clueless, uh, I had no idea. That's when I found like, kind of like this new age of YouTuber. And that's when I found guys like Xander Budnick, um, Lost Lakes, Northern Scavenger, even though the, like Northern Scavenger has been around for a while, all these kind of guys that are, I don't want to say younger, but they're, I've, I felt like I could relate to them. And um, they like, I, I could not talk about my inspiration uh, without mentioning any of those guys. Um, one thing I, I do want to say about Xander um, he, I, it's, it's funny. I don't, I don't want to put him on the spot, but he's, uh, he's actually in the woods right now. So he's not, he's not watching. So I'm totally going to do it. Um, but he actually, um, I reached out to him when I started my channel. So I, I had this, my first video that I was ready to post and, uh, I sent him a message on Instagram and just said like, Hey dude, like I've seen all your videos. Like, you've been a huge inspiration. You, you even caused me to kind of believe in myself and create this, this channel for myself. And I went out solo camping because of you. And, uh, and I started this, uh, like you've, you've inspired me and I sent him the link to my video or whatever. And, and, uh, sure enough, he was generous enough to respond to me. And you gotta remember, like, this is only like two years ago. So he was like big name established in the industry. And, uh, he responded and he said, dude, amazing. Like, keep going. Um, he liked my video. He commented on it. And then he, uh, he sent me a message. I'll never forget. He said, uh, remember me as your seventh subscriber when you blow up. And, uh, so I had like my family, my girlfriend, uh, maybe one friend and then Xander Budnick subscribed to me and that was cool. it. And, uh, so he has always kind of been, um, like just, uh, he's made himself available to me to, to like answer any questions that I have or whatever. And, and, uh, about a year later, I, I reached out to him, uh, cause he's in Toronto as well. Um, I reached out to him to see if he wanted to grab a coffee with me and, and he agreed. And so we, we met up and sat in a park and, uh, drank some lattes and, uh, I, he kind of just allowed me to pick his brain and, and, uh, I, I honestly learned so much from that afternoon with him and, uh, he, um has just kind of whether he knows it or not uh he's very much been like a mentor figure for me it's inspiration but then now and he, he's a friend as well it's it's been really cool um and uh, i'm not trying to say that to 
to be like, oh, I'm friends, friends with Xander or whatever. But um, I, I just I can't say enough good things about him. And uh, the fact that he even took time out of his day to respond to a random message. And uh, then actually, um, here's how, where all the, the dots connect here. When I, um, so I, I just recently uh, passed a hundred or a um, thousand subscribers on YouTube. I was sitting there with my family at my parents' house at, at the dinner table. And I had my phone out at dinner because I was at 999 subscribers. And I'm sitting there refreshing it, hoping to hit a thousand, right? And as I'm refreshing it, I get a notification that Xander Budnick shared my Steel River video. And within an hour, I had like tripled my subscribers. Right. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, that uh, allowed me to monetize the channel. And um, it, it's so cool. It's just, I, I don't want to keep going on and on and on here, but he has really been there for me. And uh, he's just, he's an incredible human being. Um, it's just so cool that, that he did that. And I kind of, I really hope that uh, hopefully one day uh, when I get to that point, I can do that for other people too. And I can offer advice and, and hopefully be a mentor figure for, for someone who uh, does want to do this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's cool. He, uh, you know what? I, I, I can agree with what you said there. I actually met Xander one time, right? Mm -hmm. And we're best friends now, right? So like, cause we go. Away oh yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he talks uh, about you know, all the time. <laughs> yeah. He, 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 uh, he does have a grasp on the YouTube game. He knows yeah. what he's doing. That's how he's gotten to be as as large as his channel is as quick because of he he he, he understands it. He gets it just like John, right? Uh, yeah, from Lost Leagues. They they get it. They have that that niche, and they 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 know how to work it, and they they do a great job at it. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know what? Just recently, uh, you were I, I was going through Facebook, and I seen that uh, you were actually the cover photo for one of Kevin Callan's uh, Explore magazines. And you know what? We just happen to have Kevin in the green room here. So let's bring Kevin up here on panel. Hello there, Mr. Callan. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Uh, speaking I'm of famous people. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so that, that must have been a pleasant surprise for you to uh, to be recognized by Kevin. I, you recognize uh, 10, 10, uh, 10 up-and-coming YouTube channels, right, Kevin? Yeah, ones that uh, nobody watches, but they should. But <laughs> the, other, the, the biggest one I added on, because I did that last year too, the biggest one I added on was that they did a solid trip. So it wasn't just mm -hmm. YouTubers that – you know, we, we all should watch, but these YouTubers did a solid trip. So yeah, Ben, you got, got on there for sure for the still river and, um, and a bunch of others. Uh, yeah. Um, pal and the pups and everything else. They, they did a solid trip on, on lady Evelyn that really like, I, I'm not sure if you ever did a lady Evelyn, but they did it justice. Uh, that, that was fantastic question for you. Um, you know, uh, and in, during that article for explore too, I listed all the, youtubers that that have gone through the war of youtubing uh for the last decade and are so struggling on and and doing great and that's fantastic and then i said here's the, the ones that you know people are lesser known but I, I i watch can you list um three of the ones that i didn't list the ones uh youtubers that really hey you know they they don't get uh, the, the views good one let me um Forgive me. I'm just going to pull up the article one more time just to refresh my brain of uh, of who's on that list. Um, well, while you do that, Ben, I'm going to ask you a really quick question because somebody was asking, yeah. you, what is the name of the video of the Steel River trip? Because it's it's not Steel River trip. Oh, it is. Um, oh, so I'll answer, I'll answer that because it's, <laughs> he, he did the click baiting. He said, I died. Lots yeah. of wildlife. Wolf attack. Yes. And there was some maybe naked women. I'm not sure. Yep. Yep. There's oh, there's there's naked women in all of my videos. Um, no, it's uh it's <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. You you started this. <laughs> I seen a naked Ben in oh, one of them. Oh, there you... was a big black box around his ass, but no, no, you <laughs> know what? You know what? It was Dennis, it, it was a day, you know what it was? I have a mustache and I'm sexy. Yes, yes, that that could have been it. No, it was uh, it was uh, ten days alone, uh, in the Canadian wilderness. I think it was. Um, yeah. 
yeah, I'm just uh, pulling it up here. Um, you know what? Okay, so off the top of my head. Uh, I'll, I'll, you go ahead and answer Kevin's question. I'll find the. Uh, I'll find the. Uh... Yeah, ben, you did do the video, right? Like, what? Yeah, yeah, I did. Oh yeah, yeah, that oh, was yeah, me. Yeah. That was me. It okay. wasn't stock footage. I'm okay. Kind of... <laughs> 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 um, no, I'm. Uh, I'm real nervous right now. I'm talking to a couple celebrities here. Oh my uh, lord! Yes, I know. We have to wear a ball cap and dark sunglasses and a mustache. Oh wait a minute! Yeah, yeah. You, you've already done that. Uh, when we go outside shopping. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, no, uh, l- let me, uh, let me think here. Cause I could, I could name more than three. Um, yeah. So let's list as many as you can. I think it's really yeah. important. Like, you know, a lot of the people in the, in the YouTube world and what are the yeah, ones yeah. that really aren't getting the attention that maybe, you know, I, all the others we, we know deserve the attention. So we're not knocking yeah. that at all. It's not a knock against them, but, what are the ones that actually maybe, hey, you know, you should maybe look at these? So, uh, first and foremost, uh, I got to give a shout out to my buddies over at Mad for Maple. Um, they, yeah. They're the ones, that, yeah, I did the the uh, uh, tomogamy trip with. And um, they actually, uh, they film all of their videos in the summertime. And then they, they wait to even, they don't even look at the footage until the winter. So, the, they'll be posting that tomogamy trip, like, sometime uh maybe in the next couple months um th- the problem is a, a lot of uh people on that list uh were people that i'm actually uh kind of close with so i was like messaging back and forth with a few of them going holy crap like we got featured um uh, but uh, another one that comes to mind um i don't know if they're on youtube and i'm so sorry if if you are but uh riley outside uh that's a good friend of mine yeah, um, she's, she's make, awesome. The, the, yeah, incredible yeah. footage. Yeah, yeah. I I believe, mean, more, I, so, more so on Instagram than YouTube. I know like, she doesn't have a YouTube channel, but but her videos on Instagram are amazing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I'm I'm actually just looking up Riley. Uh, no, I don't. Oh yeah, no, no, they're on YouTube. There you go, Riley. I just got a. I subscribed to you. <laughs> um, no, I. Uh, I'm. That's another one that I met at the outdoor show. Um, and, uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, and, um, Riley set up my, um, well, she, uh, didn't set up, set it up, but, um, Riley introduced me to the paddler co-op people. So there was a big group of us that did this big whitewater course. So I actually wouldn't be into whitewater at all if it weren't for Riley. Um, I was like kind of, like it was something that I was thinking about, like maybe one day down the line, but I was pretty scared of it. I, I was like, whitewater's not for me. I've, I've heard like drowning stories. I've, I've been around some, uh, some pretty crazy uh, like dams and stuff like that, that are intimidating. And that's, that was like my, my idea of whitewater. Uh, but then like, you see something like the Spanish river and it's like, Oh, this is actually like super fun. Um, another one I, uh, Evan just put in the comments, uh, camper Christina, I wanted to uh, just talk about her. Uh, she, you you mentioned her at the beginning of the article, but she's yeah. like a she's well established. To me, she's well established. So so yeah. like like we've already know that, and that's a yeah. good thing. Yeah, uh, and I I just wanted to say real quick, someone in the chat a while back uh, asked if I had done any networking with with Camper Christina, and Camper Christina was um, I actually credit her for introducing me to most of the outdoor scene. So when I went to the outdoor show and I was saying, I kind of felt like a lost puppy. Um, I, I had reached out to, to her and, um, and a couple other creators. I reached out to freak of nature as well, Mr. And Mrs. Freak of nature. And I just said like, Hey, like I'm going to be at the show. Like I would love to say hi. And, uh, but I was like nervous going into that. Like, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm here alone. Like how am I supposed to put myself out there? And I walked into the show on the first, like early on the Friday and Christina was like, Ben Beauchamp, get over here. It gives me a big hug and like starts introducing me to all these people. And um, that, that was so cool. Um, but uh, another one, um, Eric, uh, EJB Greybeard, uh, Greybeard Adventures. Have you ever heard of him? Oh, yeah. yeah. So he yeah, did. For sure. So uh, he was part of the group with Riley. Uh, they did uh, the Missinabi River. Um, that was a good video. Oh, my gosh. If, if that's, that's totally worth a watch if, if – uh, he's he's doing uh like a segment so he's doing like part one part two kind of thing 
Um, and he's got all kinds of drone shots and then missing Abby. And like, that's totally worth a watch. Um, oh my gosh. I, I, uh, I would love to come back to this um, another, well, not another time, but um, like there's so many people out there that are worth watching. It's like, it's like we could be here all night if I, if I listed them all. I, I think I think maybe uh, Ben that that might be the point that we're all trying to get at is that there are so many good ones. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I got some comments uh, today actually through social media saying, "Gosh, you, you didn't put this person, didn't, didn't that that person," and I'm thinking, "Well, yeah, well let, let's look at it." I write a blog. I write a blog every every week for like over 30 years, and I, I get paid for Explorer Magazine to write this. And the editor said, "You only got 10, Kevin." Good, because yeah. I have to say, here's my blog for the week, and they say, because you guys don't get, get the whole world around, but they're like, okay, good idea, and I and I have two days to write it, and and it's it's three days before it goes to to publish, and I'm thinking, okay, so I do all the research and I look at all of my subscribers, but my main thing about that that piece was people that don't really you know get the attention that they should, but did a solid trip, mm -hmm. the trip that I liked. So Ben, you you were on there for for sure for the Seal River. I mean, that's an awesome trip for you to even live through that trip, right? Right. <laughs> uh, so um, and uh, you by himself, yeah. Oh yeah, and the, and the and, uh, you know um, the, all the other ones, so the Lady Evelyn and all the others and uh, all the other trips that they did, uh, that was good. But I had tons. I mean, like good. That, that's all. I I don't know how to watch TV. I watch YouTube. Oh, right? same way. Yeah, yeah, I'm the same. So that's why I wanted to ask you the question: What would you add? I mean, there's so many other others that I would add. Dennis, what would you add? I mean, I didn't add you because you're not an up and coming. You've been around for a long time. You're an old man. Uh, I'm old and wilting, right? <laughs> uh, uh, you know what? Um, gosh, so many of the ones that you mentioned there now, because I, I, I'll really touch on this. And we only got a few more minutes left here of the show. But a while back, I went into YouTube and I did the stupidest thing. I deleted my view history. And when I did that, I lost contact with so many of the channels that I that would be presented to me on YouTube when I go on there, right? So now I'm I'm caught going through trying to find new content, right? Uh, great outdoors, um, there. That's a that's a, a, a solid channel. Uh, they, were they not? They, that, I thought they were on the list. I would have said them. Were they, oh, were they on the list? Were Graham and Kate outdoors? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Were they Kevin? Yep. They were on the list. Okay, I apologize. Okay, uh, cause okay, I, sorry. Because I, 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 I would have met, like, they're, they're another good one. I, I just wanted to make yeah. sure I didn't miss them. But all, all of the channels that you, uh, you're you mentioning, uh, one another one that you touched on was uh, was Greybeard, right? Uh, I, I watched that whole series there, well, the, the videos with uh, with Riley there doing the Mizunabi River, and I, it's like, hey, I know her. I, I know that. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. And it, it's one of those things where, there, there's a lot of great content out there from from lesser known um, YouTubers. Yeah, that, that you know what? That's a great question, Kevin, and I'm so glad that you actually touched on that. that yeah, I, I should write another piece actually too, because there's there's one guy I, I I didn't add because for various reasons. Well, I had ten already, but I watch him all the time and and religiously wait for him to put it on because of his region he's in. He lives near Elliott Lake. Uh, him and his uh, his mom and dad go on on fishing trips together with a broken up canoe, like they should never be paddled. Like it, it's going to sink any moment, right? And they go in areas that I would go bird trout fishing when I worked up there, and I know the area. And it's sad, but I forget the bloody freaking site. But sorry, uh, but. I watched that religiously. I literally wait there with my, my tea and mint tea and was like, Oh, he's going to be on. He's going to be on. <laughs> and yet, but he hadn't, they haven't done any significant trip. Like they didn't do the still river. Mind you, I could, I could say, I, I, I know, I don't know him personally, but I can see that guy doing the still river with his family in the next couple of years, probably because they watched Ben's show and all the other people that I actually did that were the scavengers. I, I don't know how many people to do the still river. Um, but yeah, is is that a younger guy or? Yeah, really young. Uh, like like a teenager or? Uh, no. Uh, the other, I I'm really bad with names now. I must be getting old. But there's also <laughs> a, a young First Nations guy that lives just uh, near me, and I, I taught I I taught him years ago, and he oh, has cool. a channel out too. And and again, not a significant trips he's doing, but I love the guy's show. 
because I think we're all getting at, I love the enthusiasm. Uh, Xander, why we like him, love the enthusiasm, love yeah. the, the the charisma, right? And yeah. love the mustache, Ben, love the mustache. <laughs> you know, I've, I've thought about shaving it many times, but I can never now. <laughs> ben, your show will be gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Unsubscribe. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Awesome. Wow. Well, you know what, y'all? Uh, unfortunately, we are at uh, about the end of our time limit here for tonight's show. Um Jeez, Kevin, any any last questions for Ben while uh, you're in? I'm I'm speechless for once. I, I I spent the entire night talking to my sisters, but organizing my my mother's 90th birthday. I'm done. <laughs> That's a milestone. No, hey, I'm done. I I would like to to just say I, I know I've already thanked you, but uh, Kevin, thank you again for for featuring me in that article. That um, I had actually I was at the gym and I got a text from Evan with the link, and he was like. Uh, he was like, dude, like, and it was like all the, uh, it was the emojis with the stars in the eyes. I can't see. I just, I just about dropped my phone. I was like, are you kidding me? And they used my photo for the cover. Yeah. That was, that was insane. It still happened to be the same photo too that we use for our thumbnail. Yeah. 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 Which, which yeah. like, yeah, I just, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That, and it couldn't have been more timely as I'm trying to promote this show. Um, yeah, that was incredible. The, the one thing we should add before we leave, uh, Dennis, and you'll love uh, adding this, is that a, a couple of things that happened last year and the year even before, but mostly last year at, at the Toronto show and all the other shows, was there some the pros and cons of what was going on. Uh, I had some old timers coming up, up to me. Uh, well, I'm an old timer, but anyway, they came up to me and said, what is with this love fest? That's what they called the Toronto show, yeah. a love fest. Yeah. And I went, oh, okay. And they wanted me to shut it down. They said, all these young YouTubers, blah, 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 blah. I went, you know, you guys have a really good point. I get it. Because in the old days, we'd get, do side presentations. We do now, now PowerPoint. Um, we talked about our trips and different uh, ideas and different philosophies. With, well, gosh, you know, that's bullshit because that's not true. We all have the same as we do today. But the perception is different, right? And they wanted me to shut all of you gut down. Uncle Kev, shut them all down. Tell them all. The, the YouTubers? All, uh, yeah, all you guys. When you guys showed up, they they came to me and told me to shut you all down. I went, well, first of all, I'm, a, I'm an educator. And I've taught youth for many, many years. And I, I, I'm not the old guy that will say, well, you know what? Back in the day. Because if I said that, I wouldn't have a job still. <laughs> and the other is... Um, Yes, they, they actually do have a point. To be quite honest, they have a point about what's going on, the change. The change is new. It's different. But I rejoiced it. I rejoiced that, I'm not to say it's all positive, because honest to God, there are some YouTubers like, get the hell out of my face. You don't know what you're talking about. But you know what I'm talking about when I say that, right? Right? They're, they're all doing it because they think they're going to become famous, right? And it's like, well, whatever. Okay, uh, good luck to you. Um, but the others is, when I saw that community, that community gathering together and hugging and rejoicing everybody, you can never say anything negative about that at all. If you do, you're nobody. Yeah. It's love. It's a, it is a love fest. It is a love fest. Yeah, I'd be proud of it. Yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Hey, you know what? When you, when you really think about it, um, it, it, I, I still think that this whole YouTube community thing is, is about the whole Kevin Callan adage of use it or lose it. We are promoting the use it. Right. And that, to me, that that's a good thing. Maybe those that are against it don't want us to use it. So. No, I remember years ago I, d during the whole uh, uh, canoe groups, they would, when kayaking became a, a big thing, they said that uh, canoe tripping is done. And Kevin, find your, yourself another thing to do because canoeing is done. I went, yeah, okay. You know, my answer to this thing is so harsh. It's like, you'll die soon. We don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> and with hey. that being said, hope everybody enjoyed the first show of 2024. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to let canoeing die. I promise you that. Okay. Okay. I'm still, hey, we're talking a lot about how young I am. I got a lot of good paddling years ahead of me. And uh, I'm going to be a canoe advocate for a very long time. We should all go to the Toronto show with a mustache. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, yeah Evan, Kevin, Evan, we'll, Evan, talk, we'll talk. 
<laughs> yeah. Evan keeps telling me I got to get stickers. I'm like, I don't know what kind of stickers I, I should get, but that could be good. A little, little mustache sticker. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I know a great guy that could do them for you too. Kevin, yeah, yeah. You green room? yeah, only for a few minutes. I, I, yeah, I, 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 it's a crazy night tonight, but yes, I will. Okay, we'll see you yeah. shortly. Thanks for popping in, Kevin. Thanks again. Awesome. Well, Ben, I have to say that this has actually been a fantastic show. I, I really enjoyed this. Uh, an honor for me to have you on the show and to, uh, to to help promote your channel. That probably doesn't really need much promotion. It needs growth, but it doesn't need much promotion. So that's, uh, that's a good thing on your end. Uh, keep up the great work. Um, where can people find your, your, your socials? Where, where's the best place to look? Uh, well, YouTube is, uh, what I'm trying to grow the most. It's, uh, YouTube, just search out Ben Beauchamp. It's just my name right there. I don't have any, uh, any logo or a fancy brand. It's just, just what you see right here. Um, so I'm, uh, on, on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. It's all just Ben Beauchamp. I think TikTok might be Ben Beauchamp 16 or something. Oh my goodness. Look at that. There's Lost Lakes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, credit where credit due. Um, I'm going to once again, uh, just so that after the show here, here is the link to Ben Steel River Trip. Oh, Please thank you. Do check it out after the show here. If you got a little bit of time, it's what about an hour and twenty minutes or something like that. Great yeah, video. One oh six. One oh six could be. One oh six. Don't know how you do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a small part video for me. <laughs> All righty. Ben, thanks very much for spending your Tuesday evening with us. I look forward to seeing you again, uh, probably like, you know, within a month here at the uh, Toronto Outdoor Adventure Show. Yeah, again. yeah it's going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, man. Maybe if, hopefully the beer booth will be next to us uh, again there. Maybe we'll sit down and have a beer, right? Yeah, that'd be awesome. That would be awesome. Good stuff, yeah. buddy. We'll uh, we'll see yeah. you in the green room here in a few short moments. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Cheers, man. Well, hopefully everybody enjoyed that show. Uh, like I say, if you haven't already done so, get on over to uh, Ben's YouTube channel. Uh, hit that subscribe button and, of course, ring his bell for notifications so that you know when his videos are coming up. He's on a pretty uh, strict, stringent uh, posting schedule. He uh, seems to be posting at least once or like, you know, once every week or once every two weeks or something like that. And that's uh, that's tough to do to get adventures in and to get videos up. So by all means, uh, support these up and coming YouTubers. Uh, it's a great thing. I uh, just want to remind everybody that next week we have Bill and Ann Ostrom from Ostrom Outdoors on the show. Should be a good one. If anybody has any birthday wishes that they wish to share with everybody, please do uh, send them to us so that we can get them into the show as well. And uh, if you have any show ideas, also send that across because we got to finish getting through season five here, which we'll be going until about May. So with all that being said, hopefully everybody enjoyed tonight's show. And remember, everybody, please do keep the adventures alive. Till next time. Cheers. <laughs>